Anyway. Team One Podcast back episode eighty six. Eighty six. Um, Kate Ryan Boone, Chris Mitchell. Oh, nice. That's a good one. Pulled that one out of my ass. Um, yeah. I can't think of anybody else. Yeah, uh, Kate Ryan Boone's the only other one I can think of. Jared Mitchell, but he was 87. he was eighty seven. That's right. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be all over that next week. One Team One Podcast <laughs> back. We have a full. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't. I'm like before you even say one team one podcast. Jared Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Full house today. Uh Sam is back. Producer Sam is here. Yeah. Um we also have uh William is not mic'd up. No. Nope. He's peanut gallery William tonight. Yep. I mean, hey, give William. us a look, William. I mean no other one. Uh, other other oh, other camera. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey! <laughs> He's on uh, fridge cam. Sorry, yep. sorry for the podcast uh, he's listeners. On fridge, he's on fridge cam. Uh, and then Jude, the intern, Jude's is here. here. Uh, Jude, say hello. Jude, All right, hey folks, how are we doing yep, today? You don't want to jump in front Pe- of the? Uh, yeah, I'll, miss, I'll jump in. People are don't you lift your arms. Room. Yeah, don't I'm lift your lift arms. arms. But I'm here. There you go. Fully uh, tied up. Jude, we can't see you guys. Remember, this is a podcast. Okay, this is so podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's visual. You need to be audio. Right. Got it. Got right. But for YouTube, follow us. YouTube. There we go. There you yeah. go. You, you would have understood social that. Medias. That's on you. You're not watching on YouTube. Subscribe so that's your YouTube. Fault. That's right. Yeah. Um, all right. So big episode tonight because yeah. we have Pot of Gold is going to be joining us in about 30, maybe uh, 20 minutes or so. Right. Um, Pot of Gold is a podcast that I was following before we ever started doing our podcast. And I would listen to right. those guys and I loved them. They've taken a break and now they're coming back and I wanted well, to have them back on. Hold on. They're not taking a break. They're they were taking a break. No, they're cowards. Why? And they quit because oh, they got that's what somebody told too much heat in the kitchen. Apparently somebody made a uh, <laughs> Apple podcast review of uh, them the other day because they came back with an episode and that's what they said is they well, look, called I, them cowards. I mean, I think they're completely correct. Um, <laughs> well, well, I'm over. sorry. What? Why are you sorry? The, the the podcast review? Yes. Oh, that was you. Yeah, it's on me. Yeah. That's my bad. <laughs> you did that. Okay. Yeah. Fucking all right. my fans. Sam, man. Jesus Christ. Can never be pleased. Um, yeah, so we're going to have them on in about 20 minutes. We'll talk about LSU football, of course. And then um, anything we want to talk about. Like, we were yeah. talking about that before. Like, this doesn't have to be about LSU football every fucking week, does it? Well. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, I a guess. Little a little bit. Uh, but we can talk least... about whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, whatever you want to talk uh, about. What, what's on your mind, Matt? Yeah, you're the host, Matt. Tell what do you man. got? <laughs> <laughs> Real fun topics going on. <laughs> um, this we, week, we got Coach O, Eli Ricks, and Afghanistan. Yeah, we're, we're about to go live to Assam, Asid, and Magiri Galala. You said well, that, that, that perfectly. You, tar- you said that perfectly. Well, no, I just kind of rolled my tongue a couple you need times. To be very, very careful. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what that reminded me of. Yes. <laughs> what are we talk about this guy? What is his name? Uh, He's a know. Hall of Famer. Morris something Morris. Jack Morris. Jack Morris. Jack Morris was uh, canceled. Canceled. Uh, is he canceled or is he? I think he's good. I, he, he, apologized, he apologized. That's apologized. all I saw. Well, that yeah, doesn't. Do, is he canceled? When you apologize, does that mean that you're well, canceled? Well, give the backstory here because I don't think everybody right. knows this. So, yeah. Shohei Otani was about to bat against the it was against Tigers, the Tigers right? right? Yeah. Which is hilarious, and I'll get to why that's hilarious in a second. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to so, figure your figure out your racism well, before we say no, it. No, 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 no. It's not. It has nothing to do with the Tigers. It's yeah, just, what do you got against Tigers? No, it's just it was the Angels Chinese. against the Tigers, which a couple years ago, do you all know about uh, – What's the guy's name who home, who hit the homer like while the guy was giving an apology speech? Uh, oh, Cassianus. Ca- and, and oh, Cassianus. Oh, deep drive to left field and by that Cassianus. Was during Angels, that was rough. That was during Angels Tigers, and this one now, was also that during was Angels rough. Tigers. I can recite. That was Reds. Do it. That was the Reds game. Do it. It was no, a Reds like broadcaster who did that. Oh, it was Reds. Yeah. Yeah, it was the Reds. It was the Reds Bali Sports, and that was the same thing with Jack Morris. That one, that one is. They were both in Detroit, though, right? No, that they were playing. It could have been. I don't know, but Uh he said something regarding uh, a certain. uh, Do the full speech. 
Do the full do, thing. Do I really have to? Do please, it. Please, please. We need okay. you to do it. I need this. I believe he said, <laughs> insert city's name here is the fag capital of the world. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's Wait, I thought you were gonna was, say like, mic. yeah, the apology yeah. part, the part that, I, and yeah, and then he was think, like, I, I, I love all people, and that's a deep one, right? Feel for a grand slam. <laughs> <laughs> no, you literally just said the words that he messed up. I thought you were gonna. I thought that's <laughs> what y'all wanted me to say. I, thought, I think no, you should I apologize. You were, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I you he wasn't to right being canceled. quoting another person. <laughs> um, all right. So, what did Jack Morris say? What, oh, uh, yeah. So Shohei Otani was about to bat, and they said, uh, "So what?" The color guy said, hey, "So what do you do against uh, against Shohei Otani coming up?" And then I'm Jack sure. Morris says, "You need to be very, very careful." <laughs> but, yeah. That was it. What? And he said it with like an Asian <laughs> accent, and so like right. oh, it's gosh. like messed up or something. I yeah. Don't know. There's uh, you know, kind of funny, but yeah, right. I th- yeah. At the same time, it's like, I liked it. I liked it. Of added, course you did. You know what did he do? He added color. What is of he? Of course, the color you did. commentator. You're a white male. Uh huh. Um. So <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Today. Moving on. That happened today. Yeah. Yes. Moving LSU on. camp going. Rock LSU and roll. LSU camp. Uh, LSU camp. What? My guy Nick Demas. Nick Demas. Whatever. Doing the, the bag. Demon oh, yeah. Demas. Yeah, yeah. Dominating Demas. Sniper. Big, yeah. He. Dude. He bit it hard. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. That like, was great. Yeah. I, um, I just love Kevin Falk immediately. Sniper! <laughs> yeah. it's like, Send did y'all that to his that phone. On, did y'all get that on camera? <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, if you didn't, if you didn't catch that, uh, Nick Demas is a walk-on running back who fell. He's a converted linebacker. Was he? he? Mm-hmm. I think so. Um, smaller guy. To me, he's smaller. So yeah, I guess um, so. Uh, doing some research on Nick Demas, I've seen a few uh, high school photos of him, and he's. Okay. Uh, not the guy you would think that would be a running back at what would you have LSU. Guessed? What would you have guessed? Wait, wait. We aren't, we aren't going down the route of, fraternity of hating guy. on this guy. Fraternity guy. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, not going to hate on this guy's oh, yeah, athleticism. No. Like, yeah, this is, uh, this is your guy, right? I know. I'm all about this guy. Sam's I mean, yeah, all about mess him. up on some bags. Yeah. Like, whatever. You called, you called me the other day and you wanted to do an NIL deal with the guy. Yeah. Like, I'm whatever in. we can do. I can't really get him all in. Let's do it. Let's I would love it. to do an NIL deal with a walk-on specifically. Well, while we're at it, let's just go with the Moxie of the week. I mean, are he's we, right there. Are, already? Yeah, he's yeah, there. Fucking... And we were talking about him. Let's do it. Right, right. The, mock, there it is. the Moxie of the week this week is our friend, our uh, big friend of the podcast, Nick Demas. I'd love to um, talk to him because he's from Indiana. Right? I want the graphic up. Yeah, let's oh, get the we got graphic. A graphic I made too. a great graphic for Nick. But it's a podcast, guys. Let me yeah. to tell you. It's There's a podcast. people that watch yeah. on YouTube. Oh, my watching. Goodness. There's people right, that so watch. Nick Demas, right here, uh, <laughs> looks like. I mean, does he not look like an LSU running back? I mean, no. look at the guy. He looks like. Uh, does he not look like Jacob Hester? He looks like <laughs> no. You know, oh. like oh, gen- oh my bad. He looks like the generic little brother in a movie. You know, like you're oh. just trying to find a guy to be the little brother. Or is he like the bully? The bully of the little kid. Like, oh, I can see that too. Uh, Home yeah. Alone. Like Remember he's this, the kid. He's like this nil deal you were like talking like about. Out the window. Old. Out the window. No, I think he's. I no, no, Sam. No, look, trust me. When we open up the checkbook, he'll change his mind. <laughs> I think Sam, we can get him. Sam, I'm gonna say this. I think he's very handsome, ladies. I think you should all date Nick Demas at once. Not saying no. Wow. Wow. Saying Nick Demas is a snack. Yeah, um, he's a whole snack. <laughs> A whole snack. Uh, him, him tripping over those bags and him rolling and knowing that he fucked up. Well, no, that that like, was where I got. Well, that's where I came with the moxie of the week. First of all, you're a white running back. Yeah, for LSU, okay. everybody understands this. You're, but then you fall in practice. Kevin Falk is your freaking coach, right? Yeah. He pops back up, continues on to the drill, nails it. The second nails time. it. Oh yeah, nails he jumped, it. He jumped right over those bags. Yep, yeah. slow, slow clap. clap from uh, slow William clap. over here from the it, peanut gallery. Big time moxie shown by well, I kind of thought friend Nick Demas. He like rolled a little bit, like he like, hit it and fell, and he like he gave up for a no, second. He for was a second, like, he I'm was like, ah, shit. Yeah, right. Yeah, he was like, ah, right. fucked up. Everybody's gonna laugh at me. <laughs> He's like, but then gave those uh, the the punching bags at the end gave those hell. Yeah, he did. Oh, he smashed. He did. I, uh, <laughs> more than I saw. More than <laughs> I saw with hell. John Emery. I mean, he. He uh, ran through him even more than that. But um, anyway, Nick Demas is the <laughs> moxie of the week. Um, we appreciate we appreciate him. We're going to have – we'll see if we can get Nick on the podcast. 
We're Maybe still on we video, so I'm you're in. he's whispering like like it's not all being recorded. You're the one bitching about the video. It's <laughs> yeah. on video. I see you doing I'm it. Doing Just say it. Shit on me. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, we're gonna have uh, Pot of Gold guys joining us in about 15 minutes. Uh, anything else from practice that we've seen so far that we can kind of talk about before we get them on? Uh, yeah, I don't really care too much about practice clips, honestly. Uh, they're just, you know, it's the media portion is always like during like the individual drills and it's like you're just not going to see very much. But what I did love hearing this week was um, Elias Ricks during his media portion. Talking about defense. Talking about defense. Yeah. Talking about. LSU might be the best defense in the country this year. I loved it too. Yeah. I absolutely and it's like, loved it. I've been saying this whole offseason, like, why couldn't this LSU defense be elite? Like, what? I mean, other than linebacker, like, where are the question marks, really? I mean, it's linebacker and safety, which, like, they're question marks, but it's like, I like the guys there. Outsider. I was listening to Kublik this morning, and he said, or it might have been McElroy, Auburn one, guy, by the way. One of them said, yeah. um, None of these LSU guys are getting beat in one on ones, which is true. Yeah, I mean, there's too much talent. Like you're not. It's not like these guys are getting pushed off a block or getting beat by wide receivers. They're they're wide. They're it's busted. Covered. Individually, they're some of the best defensive right. players in the country. Individually, right? Um, uh, Mike was enough. That might be better. There you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, what a lot of people assume is that when it comes to like, especially in the scrimmages on Saturday, that the defense always comes out hot. And so the litmus test will be the next couple of scrimmages they play on Saturday because the offense gets more plays and becomes less right. uh, guessable. Uh, that's not the right word, but I don't care. No, right, right. Yeah, and so – Predictable? Yeah, predictable. Yeah. I prefer guessable. 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 Yeah, I like, I like guessable. Guessable. Totally guessable. And so – and on top <laughs> of that, now you got to worry about the offense. That's honestly the only question mark. Offensive line. This offense is the big nat, fat boys in the front. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Love fat boys, I, really. I'm taking this is going to be extreme hot take probably. Uh oh, yeah, I think been hot take city the past couple of weeks. I think the offensive line is going to be fine. All right. No. Oh, wow, hot take, hot. Oh, woo, woo. That is, that is a hot take. <laughs> can, is it? Just everybody, like, I, everybody. I don't know how just, you can just assume they're going to be fine. LSU no, was I'm, fifth in offense last I season think, in the SEC. I, I mean, that's think a fact. that the offensive line with with Max Johnson as a mobile quarterback is going to make all the world a difference for this team. Sure. And I think that they're deeper than what people give them credit for. I think there's plenty of guys back behind them uh, that can, that they, they need to show it obviously. And you need to like have guys. I mean, if somebody goes down like a Cardell Thomas, let's just take him. Not even, he's not even probably even the too deep at this point. I think he is actually, you think so? Well, it, then that's a great example. Then mm-hmm. say uh, Ed Ingram goes down and you need Cardell Thomas to step up. This is a guy with a shit ton of talent. Yeah. Sure. Like that came out of high school with like all the accolades. Right. He just hasn't shown it on the field. At, He's still going to come in and at the very least toss dudes around. We yeah. have, we have, we're loaded with guys that are like four, four stars behind these guys right. that are starting. Yeah. So that's where I'm like, I don't understand why everybody's all up in arms about our offensive line. Right. We're still deep. Yeah. Um, actually, you know, they, just haven't, they haven't played. I don't. It's not a hot take to say they'll be fine. I was thinking that you were saying that they're going to be, be good. good. Yeah, that would be a hot. Take. I think. I think they could be good. Um, but but to be middle of the SEC, I don't think which they're going to be I would bad. Consider fine. I just don't think they're going to be bad offensive line. Yeah, I don't either. I, I think that they're gonna they're gonna make it look like it's a good offensive line. Because like, I like I love the interior. Uh, you know, Deck Gillis is fine, which is like all we're looking for here to be a fine offensive line. And then Cam Wire also I, fine. I think I think at the end of the day, you don't have a you don't you're not gonna have a statue standing back there um that can't run. Sure. You're gonna have a guy that can run out of the pocket, whether it's Johnson or Nussmeyer, if he has to come in. Both right. of those guys can run and scramble out of the pocket or, um, and make plays out of the pocket. Or the walk-on guy. Nah, I forget that. If that happens, the it's guy all related, off the, the table. Guy yeah, but, no, but he Kevin can run, Falk. is what I'm saying. Damian, Damian Falk or whatever? Is yeah. Right? Is yeah. he related to Kevin? I'm pretty sure. He's from Karen Crow and the Falk. Yeah. Uh, oh. Just like Trev, Trev Falk. All, they're all, all those guys are from the same spot. Huh. Yeah. Mar- Marshall I Falk. That. No, I, I know. He's Marshall from, Falk he's is from a New Orleans, cousin of Kevin Falk, though. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't know that. Um, so I, I think that the offensive line could be a, a good position for LSU. Um, maybe not the 
maybe not the best, obviously, and it's probably still considered a weakness. But yeah, that's my hot take sure. is Kevin Falk. I mean, Kevin Falk, listen to me. Uh, the offensive line mm-hmm. will be good. Yeah. No, we'll be okay. Sure. That is not a hot take. Uh, it's not a hot take? The offensive line is going to be fine. Like, it's going to be good. The offensive line will be like, okay. Hey, we're going to be average. Hot take. Like, offensive line will be um, the this is <laughs> the offensive line. What would be the hot take <laughs> here? How about offensive line? I will think be I think it's just no, top I fifteen in the country. People are just bitching top about 15? something. Yeah. How do you even? Are you take making his take for him now? How do you I'm, even? I'm rank trying that? to. I'm trying to find where the line is to make this a hot. <laughs> I don't take. even know how you rank. I'm that, just though. trying to help. I don't know either. Uh, the offensive line will be the best in the SEC. Okay, that's a hot. That's take. a very hot. Take. Yeah, now we'll, we'll, you can have that one. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. One. I'm not going to do that one. I'm not going to do that one. Um, I think we have one of yeah. our guys on. Uh, oh, Mike is it. here, but we're not going to have him on yet. We'll mm. we'll wait. Yeah, yeah. We'll wait no just touchy. a second. Um, and uh, yeah, itchy yeah. fingers there. Good Sam, Lord. goodness gracious, just give it a second. Uh, <laughs> hey, what are you doing, William? Get out of the shot. Um, all right, Keep so bossy. we do need a sponsor. We're going to go over a couple of sponsors right now. So oh, yeah. um, first of all, Bank of England Mortgage. You can't forget about those guys. Patrick Michelson at Bank of England Mortgage has been fantastic to us. Reach out to those guys about any kind of uh, first mortgage or refi options. Uh, great rates right now, so give Patrick a call. Also, <laughs> River Cities. Uh, <laughs> total maintenance. River City's total maintenance at in the North Shore area. So uh, <laughs> give Lucas Ragusa a call over at River City's total maintenance. Um, North Shore and New Orleans area. And then Fred's. Yeah, there you go. It, thank you. <laughs> Fred's in Tigerland. I can't forget about Fred's, a staple in Tigerland. Also, we need a sponsor for Fridge Cam. Uh, a new a new fridge. Um, William, get something out of the fridge real quick. Okay. Shall um, we? Or who'll leave the Fred's logo up for the, the yeah, first? Yeah, leave the Fred. Fred's can be the first fridge sponsor. All right, so we have uh, the fridge cam. We need to get a sponsor for the fridge cam. Not quite sure. We have stacked with beers right now and Trulies and uh, y'all are drinking Mai Tais like a fucking animals yeah. right now. Not animals, more like uh, 65-year-old men. Who wear Hawaiian well, shirts? They're my wife's. Well, they're my wife's my guys. Today. So yeah. no, well, they're very good. You're they're welcome. Very, maybe I should. Have. They're very alcoholic too. So, so we're gonna we're gonna work on a, a fridge fridge cam sponsor. So every time every, anybody goes into the fridge, uh, shout out fridge cam. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's where we're at. The Fred's um, fridge. All right. So how about that? Fred's we fridge? are joined, and we'll fridge. we'll add them both in, uh, Sam, and you can put up another graphic. All right. Is uh, we're joined by. Uh, the Pot of Gold guys, and this is Mike and Brett from Pot of Gold. What's happening, guys? Can you hear us all right? Yes. Hello, Fred. Oh, oh, wow. and, and oh my God. That Their voice is better golden. than us, man. Look at that well, setup, we know, guys. We know what we're doing. Jeez, these guys <laughs> have been around longer than us. How long Goodness have y'all been gracious. doing this? Is this our red shirt senior year? Red, red shirt senior, senior year. year. COVID I'll, I'll give you one. Yeah, we're gonna get an extra and an extra. We didn't do year. shit last year. Y'all know that. Yeah. Yes. Y'all y'all quit. <laughs> y'all quit. No, I'll You're a bunch you. of cowards. You cowards. We, yeah, that's, that's us. Right. Big big cowards. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you, one team, one podcast was the name this the our like second choice of names. And the reason we really? didn't take it because it was because it was Ed's first year. And I looked to Mike and I'm like, dude, what happens if he gets fired in like six months? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and so it's that's gonna like be literally rough. why we didn't take the take uh-huh. the one team, one podcast name. So we're like, it might sound dumb in a year when Ed's gone and, and, so- and you know, everyone's out. Also, Cody Worsham was another one who told us the same thing. He Co- almost took that. Yeah, and Cody also, Worsham and Carter Pow- Carter Bryant yeah. had a podcast for like two weeks called One Team, One Podcast. Yeah. And so then oh, when the, we take the One Team, now? One Podcast, <laughs> yeah, everybody said that we stole the name from those guys. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. It, it took a Hot lot takes. of digging to find that podcast, too. That's right. Uh, yeah, we, we found a, a pot of gold one from Notre Dame. Mike was pissed. I was serious. I told him to take it down immediately. <laughs> they didn't listen. <laughs> so you guys have taken a break for uh, – how long was Daryl's official break? 
Um, because I, I mean, know y'all did one every once in a while during right. the, I can't during call the last it. season. I can't call it. <laughs> <laughs> Little Kai from Dogtown there. I don't know. We uh what do we do? We did like one show every other week during the season. Okay. Um, you oh, know, so that was pretty lax a day as a cool. And then after that, we just I don't think we did anything in the off season like we usually yeah, do. Not much. I mean, the off season, you know how it is. You're just trying to come up with ideas and stuff. And it was just I told Mike this, like I didn't think fans and all that stuff really mattered to me until we didn't have them. And I just couldn't get up the energy. Like I'd watch the games, but it was just really hard for me to grind all these post game interviews and stuff. Not just because we're losing because shit I've, you know, I I worked for the team in 2008 or whatever, whenever we lost every single game and it was the most fun year of my life, but it just didn't have the same juice. I felt like I was watching all kinds of spring games across the country and it was Mm -hmm. just you know, we didn't really know what COVID was, was like at the time. And Mike and I weren't doing the podcast together as much. You know, I had a newborn child, so it was kind of like, uh, we didn't really know, got to keep Grant, it, Grant know. sold our studio. <laughs> Grant did sell the studio. Grant the and intern, just, right? Yeah, yeah. He's trying to hop on in a little bit. Okay. I'm not sure yeah. if he's. So when he comes room. on, we won't put him in. in the no, end. it's fine. But yeah. God, he'll no. be in the waiting room. Yeah. We don't <laughs> want the glass. We have interns over here. Yeah, we have two uh, interns. They're, they're, they're yeah, I saw get, one peep in. Oh, yeah, multiple. Get out of the get camera. Out of the camera. Dressed to impress for the day. He that's he right. That's well, 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 his tie looks like week. shit. Tell him, show him your tie. Show him, show tie? him your tie. No, show him your tie. I have to go all the way. He doesn't even know how to tie it right. Oh, show that. It looks like that. Dude, I, I you got to go look, clip on, bro. I learned to tie a tie like six months ago, so don't be ashamed. He's Jude, the intern, is trying to make his trademark where he's going to have a tie on, and then when he just walks into tailgates, we're trying to get him popular enough to where he just walks into tailgates and everybody's like jude the intern yeah and they just right him drinks yeah so the guy really drinks thought, drinks. i thought yeah. you were gonna go with the jim nance method and say like you know at the end of the tailgate he gives the tie to the person who like went the hardest or something oh that's, that's a great one we could i'm an ideas that. man so put that one in your tickle <laughs> <We laughs> after that i can give you unlimited ties <laughs> we, we could spawn hanging up right there we could sponsor that too just yeah we could get a tie sponsor yeah we can find a tie sponsor yeah, we're all, I'm all about marketing here. Yeah. Um, ideas. Okay, so I know, I'm not giving away anymore, Mike. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I already, I see the uh, what is it the the vitamin water there sponsorship you got vitamin water and Abedia is there already. Right? Yeah, we oh, were okay. bay coconut water last week. We've moved on. <laughs> <laughs> what or by the, whatever the fuck they're called. <laughs> when you're when you guys are doing your podcast, are you guys drinking drinking like we are? Like we're drinking pretty heavily. Uh, I think in the beginning. We were, uh, I, I definitely was, Brett wasn't as much grant for sure. He's got a, t- a keg. So we, okay. he just rolled through that, but then it kind of turned into a kind of a joke. We would just like snap him off in the mics. Um, I've got a yeah, drink grant, right now. Grant you guys have me joke. tickled nervous. Did yeah. I really? <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we have, we have, um, I have all the bourbon here. So we're yeah. bourbon guys. Well, these guys are drinking Mai Tais. So, um, but yeah, we, we, we we'll have to get you over for the Durante Jones Bourbon Club for sure. I saw that. That's an awesome yeah. deal. That's really cool. We're going to have it at Hayride Scandal in Baton Rouge, a once a week show. We'll be doing that. And then I have Durante. We were, we were considering whether we were going to cold call Durante Jones right now. Uh, to get uh, 100%. Let's so, go. I don't think he. I don't think he's going to answer. But no. But we can leave him a voicemail <laughs> if you want. Um, I was curious right, so, if you knew him. Yes, we oh, met him. Oh, okay. a few times. We've yeah. met him a, a few times. We've had drinks with Durante Jones, which is uh, which was really cool. Um, we've done a podcast with him before as well at Stabs. It was and, really really high production. I remember watching it. Oh yeah, oh, no, man, it was Jesus the worst Christ. production we had. We were at it. Stabs and the Wi Fi was terrible. Honestly, we should delete the video off of YouTube. Yeah, it was really really bad. Um, Can't we do had it. Justin Vincent it and also has um, views, though. Justin Vincent and Durante Jones were both there um great it was a great show but yeah the audio and the wi-fi was awful are you but, flexing on these guys right now they, no he yeah, asked show in their yeah, yeah no we brought no, them was... in just so that we could brag at them the whole <laughs> yeah time. right yeah so uh yeah what are you less what you miles do? Yeah, well we kind of we kind of led in with we had the name first so that was that was kind of a rough introduction <laughs> it was a good anecdote mike Right. <laughs> yeah, we've just been trying to catch up. No, but what that. I've been saying to everybody is that, like, all right, so everybody about our defense, you know, going from Bo Pelini to Durante Jones, I've literally had drinks with Durante Jones, and I can tell you it's going to be night 
in day difference with our defense from 20, uh, 2020 to 2021, just because of the way that he's just a cool cat, cool customer. He's going to be able to communicate better than, than Bo Pelini did. Uh, what are your thoughts right now? Did you have what drinks did? with Bo Pelini? I did not. No. Um, we he, did. He called me. Yeah. <laughs> he probably drink. He probably drinks Bush Light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Natty Light, baby. Keystone. He just, he drinks Natty Light and just yells at you all the time. Yeah. He's like, I miss my ex wife. <laughs> I bet he says something like that. Jesus. Star Carla, come back, please. Say, mute Jude, please. Can you mute Jude while we're having a serious conversation here? Goodness gracious. <laughs> um. <laughs> Right, so, you, know, right, yeah. you want me to go? Yeah. yeah go ahead. I, I, look, I, I mean, I feel like I was kind of out on Bo Pelini super early, and I kind of got e- – everyone was talking about how big of a deal it was going to be, and I kind of got brainwashed into thinking like, okay, okay, maybe I was like, you know, I was younger back then when Pelini was here. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. So I kind of eased up, and then, of course, Pelini sucks. My like, God, I could have been just like right on this hill. But to answer your question about this year – I mean, LSU is as talented as anybody in the country, but I can't sit here and bang the table saying that they're going to be the best defense in the SEC. I mean, they have to go out and prove it. I can't wait to watch this defensive line. Like, I think this is a 2011-type dominant defensive line that we're going to have for the first time since then. I'm super stoked to watch it, but I just I can't sit here after watching what we watched last year and act like it's just going to be overnight. And I hope it is, but I can't just sit here and tell you with a straight face the defense is going to give up seven points a game and we're going to get twenty picks. You know, it's just like I I, I, let me see it. Well, I think uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, No, I I was going to say the Bo Pelini experiment. just to kind of piggyback off of Brett, I loved Bo Pelini back in the day. I thought he was an intense coach, and I loved the defenses he ran. I think last year's situation was so unique um, that the experiment of Bo Pelini was just so ill-timed. You don't need a spectacular coach to be successful, I believe this, on our defense. I think we are loaded with talent everywhere. You need someone that understands – how to communicate that to these kids yep. and coach them up. It was, it was simply a, a, they are not responding to your coaching period. We've got the dudes everywhere. This is just not the time to have a guy like Bo Pelini trying to communicate how these players are supposed to interpret this defense. And I think Durante Jones is a guy that can communicate that to them. It's a little more of a laid back, but yet I relate to you type of vibe. And I think that is, Everything to do with with the youth of that staff, not just with Jones, with, but yeah. with Baker, um, you know, with with everybody that he's hired, Carter, everybody there. I think it's all about the communication aspect of it, um, and I think that alone uh, will improve this group. Yeah, and I, I think about um, we had Derry Beckwith on one time, and we keep going back to this a million. We've gone we're gone back to this probably by t- <laughs> ten times since we did this, but. He talked about the uh, the transition from Dave Aranda to Bo Pelini and how Dave Aranda was a calm, you know, quiet, quiet guy, but he commanded attention in a room, uh, but could still relate to players. And then going to a guy like Bo Pelini that was kind of in your face a little bit more, um, you know, not necessarily yelling at guys, but he would do that, obviously. Well, yeah, a little bit of yelling. <laughs> Yeah, and I, you know, which we is were, fine. Which is fine. We There's were huge Bo Pelini guys because of very much so. 20, 2007 and mm-hmm. coming back into um, coming back into here, we were thinking, okay, we, aggressiveness, blitzing. We were thinking about that kind of stuff instead of the communication aspect. And um, well, what and I think it sucks, you know, COVID. COVID. I'm sure they the would have been better. Past week about the racial divide with mm-hmm. the team. And that mm-hmm. was the first time I'd heard anything about this, but of course we had heard, it's the first time I'd heard anything in the media about this, but I've, I mean, we've heard different, different things and different stories, but like, man, it was, it was eye opening to hear a question posed to like Cade York about like the racial dynamic of the team last year and how <laughs> there was a disconnect. What did y'all have any thoughts about that this week? Do you want to go? Do you want me to go, Mike? Oh, you can go ahead. Yeah, I figured you'd say that. Stay up. Look, <laughs> look, honestly, obviously, I think last year a lot of things happened with race and, and like that. But 
I, I really think that you get that in the locker room around the country Anywhere. every year. And yeah. the job, a good head coach's job is to be able to take a bunch of different guys from different race, ethnicity, whatever you want to call it, different walks of life, some rich kids, some poor kids, and get them to the one team, one heartbeat kind of bullshit that Ed pumps. I mean, that's kind yeah. of what you got to do. I mean, think about you can go down any roster on on in the SEC and anywhere. There's a ton of people who grew up with nothing, and there's some people who had boats and everything else. You know, I mean, the job of a head coach is to be able to take the 85 or 120, whatever, if you want to count walk-ons, and get them going Always. towards a common goal. You know, I mean, we're big walk-ons fans. Big here, walk-ons guys. Yes, yes. No, but I, I think I think what I mean by ill times is exactly what you're talking about. If you have a racial divide on your team uh, during a lot of a, a evolving culture situation uh, <laughs> preseason, I don't know if Bo Pelini is the best guy to relate to those yeah. guys All and right, kind of yeah. like, you know, uh, welcome them with open arms and be like, Hey guys, I don't really understand it, but I'm there for you. You know, I don't know how that feels to go Bring through what in, you're guys. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Or like, Hey, let's meet up and have a barbecue and we'll talk about it. You know, and we can, well, and I, think, I, think Ed, right. I think Ed realized that. And you can kind of see it when you look at the age of all these coaches that he brought in, he wanted to bring in guys. Sorry. I keep hitting my laptop. Samurai chop. So it. fucking <laughs> intense. <laughs> <laughs> he, Ed brought in a bunch of younger guys that could relate to these 20, 22 year old kids on the team. And we'll yeah. see if it works out. I, I'm optimistic. But once again, it's like I can't sit here and tell you that Jake Peets is the best offensive play caller that God's ever seen. I hope so. I'll take I'll trust Joe Brady's word on it. And I, I think he's going to do a good job of getting guys the ball. But I don't know. I have well, no idea. It could look terrible. Well, and there, there's been a lot of uh, Ed Ogeron like um, homerism going on uh, within the within the like local medias and all that kind of stuff. Of, as far as how it's not Ed Ogeron's fault of what happened in 2020, um, but then when you you look at what happened in 2020, you you have to put so much fault in his lap, right? Of like. Yeah. There was a lot yeah. of things that happened in 2020 that, like, man, I, I, we felt like he just checked out for about a year, uh, like half the year, and kind of got it back together after maybe Missouri. Uh, but it was almost too late at that point, and he had to just kind of like figure it out. And it, thankfully, they did. They, they, they won a couple of games at the end. Ed, the salad- Ed was so comfortable that he felt like he could take the year off, and like we'll figure it out later. I, I think he felt Maybe with the COVID situation with that. I mean, I, I felt like there was a lot of personal stuff with that, like the divorce. It definitely, had to do with that there was a hundred percent. No, I, I'm not saying like he just decided. You know, he woke up. I hey, we won a championship. I'm taking the whole year off. You know, he didn't put his foot down and think that. I think a lot of factors played into it. This um, is Rich Cam happening in your face. This is it. This is the <laughs> yeah, third intern. This, is, this, this is, is the Freds. This is uh, the. Let's see how many we have. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. You're yes. Yes. Yeah. We we You're, caught that. Or, that was a uh, that was a complete blow. Yeah. By I, I, th- I think what happened with Ed, though, is is he definitely got complacent for that year and just knew that he was fine. Um, so there is a lot of blame to be had there. Um, I, but I, you know, everyone had that same circumstance when it came to COVID. Um, yep. I, I think we can't use that as an excuse um, to go five and five. I mean, that's incredibly terrible. And I think that the culture, though, the spiral of like that toxic locker room is yeah. what you can blame on the coaches and ex- in the leader of the coaches, which is at Orgeron. I believe it starts with him. You can't let a locker room get that toxic, period. No, right? I completely agree. I think what happened, honestly, and like you said, the personal stuff obviously plays into it. But I think after 2019, Ed thought that he had laid the culture and the groundwork for the culture. And, all, and then he was just going to sit back and watch the athletes go. And I think – if LSU wouldn't have lost so many integral parts to that 2019 team and you had a little bit of experience coming back, I think it possibly could have worked out. But when you have so many inexperienced guys and then Miles Brennan going out so early, which not saying Miles Miles Brennan would have been the guy to keep everybody together, but it's just a lot of bad things kept happening. No, I completely agree. I I definitely think Ed has to take some blame on his shoulders. And you kind of mentioned the media stuff and it kind of brought me back to thinking about 
how Ed Orgeron would sit there and have crawfish boils and cookouts and provide food for all the media member. Like, you know, we can make, everyone can make fun of uh, Ed Orgeron from the outside. He really does seem to have every basis covered. He knows that for having sure. the media in your back pocket is a massive, massive deal, especially at a program that's going to have the eyeballs like LSU, because he knows if he was a jerk and he, you know, was kind of like less and just bumbled around in press conferences and didn't really give you a straight answer, there would probably be a lot more articles, whether it's warranted or not. I don't think, you know, I, I think if you fire a head coach a year or two after a national championship, it's sure going to be hard to promise the other guy you won't do it the next guy. But I, I don't know, man. I, I think this is definitely a huge year for LSU. And I, I think, you know, as as they're kind of coming back with a lot of experience, it's still a lot of like unprovenness out there that's going to be on the field. And he's going to be trusting some some young guys with I don't know if his legacy is the right word, but his his future in the next half decade. Yeah. And so what um, I, you brought up. Uh, Miles Brennan and with him going down, obviously, I, I, we were on the same camp with uh, Max Johnson was going to be the starter, uh, whether Miles Brennan got hurt or not. I don't know what you guys thought about that, but I'm a Brennan truther, man. I, I can't quit him. I've been on that bandwagon for five well, years. Jude, the intern is a big fan. I, of now. I agree. What, what we had kind of been told with some of the people we know, I do agree that I, it, it was going to be Johnson. Like that's kind of, I was trying to get mentally prepared for that. I just, <laughs> man, I just, I just watched Brennan throw the ball and I, I watched what he could do and f- fit it into windows. I'm just like, God, why can't this be the guy? I was a Max guy. I felt like Brennan, I, I feel like I've seen enough of Miles Brennan. There was nothing he was going to walk in and do differently that we haven't seen for years now. Even though I know it's limited, but the limited times he's been there, it is what it is. Yeah. Where I feel like with Max Johnson, he's your best chance to win. He moves the chains. He's safe. He's big. He's strong. He's a very aggressive runner. Um, and he was super young. I mean, he's a true freshman. He came in there. And not that he won those games, but he didn't right. lose them. Yeah, I, yeah, I like Johnson. I'm not not hating on Johnson. I've just been. We got to get ready for the nuts bus if we're being honest here, dude. Yeah, yeah, right. dude. Well, <laughs> sorry. Our our we're question. Howard, our guys. question is. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> the Nuss Walker Howard quarterback competition. Oh my god! Two years is going to be, be a big one. Yeah, um, it's going to be very exciting. It'll be something gonna, LSU's not used to seeing. It's going to be cool. Remember, remember I, like 15 months ago when everyone was like, LSU's quarterback room's not going to have a problem for decades. I'm just like, guys, I think that's a little like, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't trust that so far. And now we're sitting here with like one and a half quarterbacks going into no, the year. No, for sure. sure. Um, I, I think the the TJ Finley leaving and Sam, our producer, is a um, an Auburn homer, by the way. So. Uh, what a, what a, th- my favorite part like how can you be excited as an Auburn fan as the, when Finley commits because you're sitting there thinking we beat this team like five thousand to four yeah, with Finley. Not. I mean like, the thing oh I was he God, was our best it. player last year. He was our best he player best in that, player that game. In that yeah. Last year, oh yeah, half. absolutely. He right. was a big. He's the MVP for Auburn. Yeah. So I mean, just bring that kind of mentality to like just win down on the plane. Which hopefully and, he doesn't play. Co- Bo Nix is going to be better than him. And then hopefully, yeah. hopefully, I fucking hope so. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, can't get much worse. Davis is gonna take it, is gonna jump Finley too. I don't want Finley I, really. I mean, he's just big and there, and we need him. You just like yeah. it for this situation, like that's why you like Finley there. Well, Sam, I just the second him, he's he's supposed to be the starter, you're gonna start comparing him to Cam Newton, just like just no, oh, God, no, he's Lord. not the like Cam. No, he's Jamarcus, he's, of course. No, he's yeah, Jamarcus. He's more Jamarcus. Yes. Well, <laughs> you're gonna the kid it. looks incredible in seven on seven. There's no question yeah. about that. Ben's I mean, he's great. got a cannon. Yeah, exactly. Looks really good letting it I, I, You know, that game, spirals. I, I hate going back to 2020. I, we do this every fucking podcast. We go back to 2020. We <laughs> yeah, analyze we the game. Yeah, we haven't talking about 2020. I know. And here we go. We're going to go time. back to Auburn. Oh, we go into that game plan, and it's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do short slants with uh, TJ Finley. Let him throw it uh, 120 miles an hour at Terrace Marshall. Matt. I know. Here we why, go. Why are you right, getting right, so right. mad? Here we go. I know. I got Relax. upset. My blood pressure went up. Let's stop this. Um, all right. So let's talk about Oh, oh no, no, no. Now, now I got the camera. Uh, this LSU, like, being a QBU, like, nah. Y'all yeah. have one no. quarterback. I agree. Who says we're QBU? No, I agree. 
you know, like, this is we are you're projecting these guys to be so good. Nussmeyer, Walker Howard, like even. Well, I, mean, well, like, I think the entire like, country is projecting Walker Howard. He's the number one quarterback in the number nation. Number one quarterback. Yeah. But I, I mean, mean no one, what no kind of you got to yeah. be kind of a big time <laughs> like, damn, But oh, well, now you're I feeling mean, attacked. I am feeling attacked. <laughs> oh, you can't one thing, take the heat. You Jesus, know? I can take. But like you got to kind of. We were just talking. If you're sitting here saying like, oh, we got Nussmeyer's going to suck. Oh, Walker Howard probably not going to be good. Like you know, you got to get excited about these guys you want you look yeah, at I the agree. ceiling you don't you know i mean how fun would it be to do a podcast be like Same we got grant so, nah, I don't well, know. here's a question is um all right walker howard comes on campus does max johnson is Transfer. he the well is he no <laughs> is he the starter um through his senior year I mean, I think That's it was kind tough. of proven. I think yeah. it was kind of proven with Miles Brennan that you got to go earn it because I mean, right. we weren't just going to hand Miles Brennan the starting job from what everyone has said and, you know, the rumor mill had been running around. So, I mean, you got to think the guy who comes in and competes and plays the best is going to get his opportunity. If that's mm-hmm. Max Johnson, great. I'm kind of in that camp that, like, I don't care. And especially with recruiting now and the way these guys are transferring, it's, like, really yeah. hard to just get behind a kid. To get behind, That was weird. It's really hard to, like, really <laughs> feel good about a guy yeah. and think, get like, behind oh, three – <laughs> Well, not <laughs> hand up, <laughs> um, but you know, it's just kind of hard to get super excited. I mean, you know, for a few years now, Mike and I would do the recruiting thing. It's like, Oh my God, Eric Gilbert's going to be awesome. And then the defensive yeah. end safety guy, Marcel Brooks. Oh, I can't wait oh. to watch Marcel Brooks in four years. He's going to be so sick. And he then they're just there. gone. So it's just really hard for me to like really think that far into the future because sure. you're going to get a bunch of transfers in and out. And it's just like getting to the point where, I just want to cheer for the purple and gold. It's harder. Right. Maybe it's right. just getting a little bit older and you know, you're not necessarily as close to the same age as these dudes and watching them in high school and everything. And it's, just, I don't know. I, I don't really know what it is. I think it's the transfer thing mostly. Sure. I, I would love to see, I, I, I want to see Max Johnson develop. I think he's got a bright future. I don't think anybody on our roster quarterback wise, and we have two right now, but whenever we were talking with Brendan a few weeks ago, being on the roster, I don't think any of them are elite. So I, I'm not sitting here beating my chest thinking we're going to be a great quarterback team right. um, until we see it. I mean, they have to develop, but I think we do have players now in that quarterback room um, that can develop into being great quarterbacks. Where before yeah. you'd get them in and you'd think, man, th- these guys are just putrid from the beginning. But so, with these guys, you see hope. Yeah, and what my – my uh, hope is a great word. My hope is that it is more of a – 2018 Joe Burrow to 2019 Joe Burrow. Oh yeah, uh, where you saw a night. <laughs> I think we all a hope. difference. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I, bet. I bet you did. And I don't yeah. think How it's sick would be. that be. I would say hope <laughs> and I don't. Way. I don't think it's going to be at that extent. Obviously, yeah. Fuck it. Give him the Heisman. <laughs> but you're. I, I know what you're saying. You're no, going agree. for Menzminger to a Joe Brady offense. Um, right. I know Joe Pete, yeah. Jake Pete's may not be exactly like Joe Brady, but it's going to be a little bit different. And I, I think we were all hoping that 2020, we weren't going to regress that offense from 2019, but we obviously did. Um, well, Insminger was calling all the plays. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, I know. He was the <laughs> it was Insminger's <laughs> offense. You know, it wasn't Joe Brady, bro. I know. <laughs> it was Insminger. We that. were very, we no, were that, very was, uh, that, that was us. You're literally mocking a year ago. You and me. We were right? like, that's <laughs> stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And then we were Bef- slapped in the face. <laughs> Man. Before before we get off of the quarterback stuff, <laughs> yeah. Nussmeyer, is Nussmeyer's dad or is that his uncle who's like the quarterback's coach at Dallas? Doug Nussmeyer. That's his dad. That's what I thought. He played in the did you, played, watch, yeah. did you watch? Did you watch Hard Knocks last night? Yes. Dude had the whole fucking can in his mouth, like the biggest dip you could <laughs> yeah, fucking actually, imagine. And he don't just like absolute this. football like he, guy. Yeah, well, actually, exactly. speaking of Hard Knocks, did y'all see the? Did y'all watch the end credits thing? No, with Dak talking to his offensive line. Oh, about beating talking, LSU. Yeah, about LSU. Uh, oh, I didn't see that, that part because they were talking about. Oh, you went to uh, Mississippi State because uh, instead of LSU, and he said, "Yeah, I beat LSU one time." He said, "Like the guy said." Oh, like one out of six times or something like that. That yeah. was the actual first first uh, building block to fall in the Les Miles era. 
Exactly. I sure was. Sure was. Yeah, was um, yeah that was a brutal game. <laughs> all right, let's yeah. let's get off of this. We've been talking about Les Miles 2020. We're let's, good at going off on tangents. I know. Yeah. We are too. Yeah. We are too. All right, all right it's 2021. It's very hopeful. <laughs> cornerbacks, best cornerback room. I mean, honestly, the best best two starting cor- yeah, corners. Yeah, it's filthy. Corners. Yes. Well, the whole group is filthy. Year, it? Is, can Defense somebody coach him up? Defensive right. line, y'all mentioned the defensive line that Mason Smith. I'm excited about them. So, yeah, have, y'all, yeah, have y'all gone over like be. predictions for the year or anything like that yet? Because we we did a college football preview, and probably either this weekend or early next week, we'll dive into LSU with the LSU schedule and all that, and kind of okay. go from there. So, you haven't done that yet. We're we're at um, I'm ten and two, but I'm getting close to eleven and one. Yeah, Dana, mm, it's that time of year. <laughs> yeah, it is that time of year. You know, this happens you see every a year. Practice the, videos. You're like that I guy looks yeah. jacked as fuck. Good well, ones like, tearing I'm it like, up. It is, it is too, but I don't know where our second loss is going to go come from. Uh, that's where I'm at right now. There's a few options there. I, I, I think are. we have. I think, I think you throw you throw Alabama out of the conversation, and I look at that on. and I say LSU is as talented or more talented than every other team on in the country. Yes, or at least on their schedule. Do I think we're going to beat Alabama? Probably not. Do I think we could <laughs> lose to A and M? Yeah, I think we could. You know, it's like uh, nine and three and eleven and one are kind of just like right there next to each other. It's like yeah. I could definitely see that. Like I said, man, this team really hadn't proven anything. I know a lot of people have been making snarky comments and kind of been upset about the LSU preseason ranking. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, do I think LSU is better than the 16th ranked or 14th, whatever they are, team? Absolutely. Do I think they deserve to be ranked number nine after what we saw last year? No. No, Hell absolutely no. not. You right. know, we live in it. We know all these Mason Smith guys who are, hadn't really played much. And double we, A. We, yeah, the double A. We can project them out and get excited about double it, but a. there's no reason for these beat writers in Arkansas and all you know around the country to be like, oh, no, no, LSU is going to be good. Or, or, or how about the uh, top ten coaches in the country list? And Ed Ogeron isn't on there, and you're like, it's fine. Oh, keep the eating every other one. Bro, Ed Ogeron wasn't less on there. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think less was like that was, a, that was a different top ten list. Uh, okay, yeah. no, so uh, I, I think this year is going to be kind of wild, though. There's going to be super, like the super seniors. I mean, you, you're not gonna you're gonna have a team that's been with each other longer than any other team has before, um, as far as this group working together in the off season for the first time in a while. Uh, like we said, the super seniors, I think there's going to be a lot of changes than last year. It's not going to be like last season where it truly is a, a massive disparity in talent. Like, okay, Alabama's the most talented team. All right. They're going to run away with it. I yeah. think there's the factors of the fans, momentum, the team yeah. camaraderie, like all that is going to come into play this year. With that being said, you have no idea uh, you know, what Auburn's going to do this year. You have no idea what the hell Florida's going to do with Mullen and Emory Jones. Um, I think that's his name, is Emory Jones, right? Yeah. 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 And then you've got Ole Miss. What the hell is Ole Kiffin Miss about to do? The, is he going to shock the world? Yeah. You never know. I mean, we could absolutely slip up to any of those teams, including A&M. Um, so I, if, it's hard for I me to sit you, here and say 11-1. and one. If I told you Ole Miss was going to finish second in the West, would you call me crazy? No. See, I'm no. the opposite. I'm thinking I they would. might they might finish six. I was gonna say, and then I but could also could. say finish fifth yeah, or six. Would great. you call me crazy? Yeah, yeah I think it's gonna be a wild year. You don't know. You don't know what Every to expect week in this the season. West, you gotta show up. Yeah, and I, the only thing I can think of for LSU is that okay, last year was one of our worst it, we that was the worst defensive year that I that we've ever had. Anyway, um, yeah. Yes. So if Ole Miss couldn't beat us last year. How are they going to beat us this year? Kind of how well, I feel about Texas A&M, even though A&M. I know A&M won that game. But, I mean, same thing. I yeah, it was disgusting. I, same thing. They, they scored 13. Like, count your chest about that. Thir- right. 13 offensive points against us. So, I mean, I our offense, uh, to me, is going to be night and day different. It's going to be here as well. Like, I think that has something to play with A&M. I just don't see A&M beating us. I don't think they have the offensive po- firepower to beat us. Uh, they didn't. It's an interesting long game long. because it's an interesting game because you don't know what's on the line for what team. That's you know, true. it's like LSU could have two or three losses by then and not care as much. Or you know, it's like, are you yep. playing for an SEC championship game? It's, it's true. I kind of like having that game there. I think it makes it 
if that game was in the middle of the season, I wouldn't really give a shit about AM. But since yeah. it's that last game, it's like, you know, we're gonna put a stamp on the season and you know, punch a guy I'd, in the chest. I'd love to see us I'd love to see us pull that one out as I will be there again. Um I went the last time we were there with the seven overtimes. It was probably one of the worst experiences of my life. <laughs> and was <laughs> it was that was awful. I my my wife's family are big Aggies and we kind of oh. we go back and forth. They come in for the games. I we travel over there. And uh, that experience, um, I left, like after we were done, we were in a sea, I called it a sea of happiness underneath this like tunnel and they were stopping traffic. So literally it was thousands of people trapped under this tunnel. Yep. There was a fiddler in the middle of it, just like going I to town. I remember the fiddler, dude. The fiddler. It was You're amazing. Right. And yeah, yeah, I was in that same tunnel. Yeah. And I was, I almost cried. I was so upset. <laughs> just, just the, the sheer misery of it. I walked to the car. No one could find me. I didn't take the shuttle back. It was a wild time. I'm hoping that this season is a little different for me uh, and for my family's sake. <laughs> right. How many how many nightmares have you had about that fiddler? You talked about him very uh, <laughs> dramatic. Quite a few so. times, man. It, I mean, he was like he was like Eddie Vedder. He almost like he wanted to crowd surf. It was wild, and everybody was yeah. supporting it. Um, I felt alone. I felt like I was the only one and he was just in a, just, it was amazing for him. Wait, it was so awesome for him, but, your uh, nightmares a few times. What's your that? Wife is an a fan? No, no, absolutely not. Okay. She's with me. Thank God. Jesus Thank Christ. God. Would've, would've, would've really um, okay. So any positions that you're thinking about as, uh, cause we, when y'all came on, we were actually talking about a position, uh, that could be a weakness for the team. Anything that your thoughts are that we need to shore up? Other than the obvious? Yes. But Other no, than no, the you O-line? Can go, you can go ob- obvious. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, think, I think we need to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. I think the O-line absolutely needs to be talked about. What I talked with Mike about last time we got together is like, we're too talented at running back to just suck at the position. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I don't know, you know, I'm sure you guys are around our age. I can't remember the last time we had like a bad running game. You can go back to Charles Scott, Ridley, I mean, LeBrandon Tofield, like forever LSU's had a guy that could run the ball. And I get that when you kind of go to this different offense, something's got to give, but sure. it's bad. Like it's just non-existent. And I think a lot of that does have to do with the O-line. Mike's the, uh, the O-line guy, so I can let him take that. But it's like LSU's too talented at running back to just not be able to move the ball at all. Like no one's afraid of running. Max Johnson's the bigger running threat as of you know last year than it was to hand off to Emory or Price. And I think they're super talented. I think they could easily – dude, the card tricks over here? They're all – What's going on? It's like a party over there. I don't know what's happening. Let's see. They're having a good time. Pulling out. Yeah, we're uh, we're smoking too. So you gonna get a cigar oh. going? <laughs> no, Bocock. not inside. Shout not out, inside. Shout out to Bocock. Yeah, right? Bocock cigars. That's Bocock. a big sponsor of ours. So yeah, <laughs> shout out to those guys. I am looking for a. Uh, it's gonna be a Christmas present. Be a air purifier <laughs> here. We we were googling it yesterday. So that we can saying. smoke in here. So I can smoke cigars in here. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! Uh, Excellent. So, Anyway. Excellent. Uh, ahead, Mike. No, no, I want to piggyback. Off well, line. I will. Yeah, oh. I'll go to the O line in a second. I, I, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that the running backs, though, like Brett alluded to, they're they're talented. You know, yeah. I mean, you got John Emery, who we begged for, and you know, it was it was one of those big booms, as people like to say, whenever yeah. we we finally sealed up Emery. Um, TDP is incredible. I think he's a guy that you know coming through. We wanted to see him emerge as Jeremy Hill Part Two, yeah. and you know, with the field on the field, not off the field. But I, I think that <laughs> they just don't they don't have a ton of dog in them. You know, I, I think that is what's missing. And there, that's missing from a few spots. You just don't see that that just desire. I don't know. I, I can't explain it. Uh, people kind of refer to it as the it factor with quarterbacks. But then when you look at running backs, I, I kind of allude it to a dog situation. They kind of yeah. have that fight. They're incredibly talented. Um, nagging injuries, um, just kind of not having a great field of vision and the time of high pressure situations, yeah. just some of those things that I feel like they can get over. It's just, well, when is it going to get to that point where they're enough's enough and it's time to just turn it on? Cause yeah, they, they have it. 
obviously Clyde made a bunch of plays and made more guys miss than probably anyone in the history of LSU, but sure. Joe Brady and Ensminger did a great job of putting him in positions to make Ensminger plays. Yeah. You know, whether that's screen passes or just getting him the Easy. ball. And last Easy. year I didn't I didn't feel it. It was like, hey, we have one running play. We can run it left or right, but we kind of only have one. And yeah. it just never freaking worked. And it was like no one was afraid of the run game, which made the passing game even more difficult. And, and you know, it just spirals from there when you start up, yeah, right. so, up front. Yeah. So, like, I don't, I don't want to talk too much about 2020. I mean, oh, God. Oh, here we go. Right? Yeah, yeah, we weren't yeah. doing this. Oh, God. And, but you're strictly an 80s like, Billy like, Joel cover year. band. <laughs> 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 80s Billy Joel sucks. Um, <laughs> A big thing last Fiddler. year was supposed to be <laughs> Fiddler, sure. uh, was supposed to be that the running backs were going to catch a bunch of balls out of the backfield, and that's not something that happened at all. So mm-hmm. that's something that I'm. I mean, I haven't heard them talk but, about that that much as throwing to the running backs with Jake Peets and all. Well, that. I have. I've seen. I've seen them. Uh, they actually just had a, a quote uh, this week about because Peets Peets was the running back coach for Christian McCaffrey when he came in the league. Sure. So yeah, they were talking job. about a uh, potential um, having John Emery, John Emery. I being see in that, that kind actually. of role. And that's what Jake Pete had actually talked to John Emery about. But my, <laughs> my thoughts on, uh, it, all John, right, so John, now, here's the, here's the offer. Guy, Sam checking in, nice. John Emery and, and McCaffrey, just same guy. Yeah. Same yeah. Thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. So you're hey, your mom that, was right? your mom right? right. McCaffrey's yeah. white. Hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. It's all the coach. All the so, coach. 2020. Another thought was <laughs> Chris Curry coming in did not add any explosiveness at all to that running game, and this I shows you like, how bad Oklahoma really was on defense. Honestly, no kidding, right? Or how good was Joe Brady to put? Yeah, uh, Chris Curry in that in the right spots, but it um, also dude. shows you it shows you that Chris Curry had something that the other guys didn't, and he just wanted it more. He had that it factor, not that. All right, let me take that, that back. Curry did not have the it factor, but Curry Curry wanted it hard it enough out. that he was going to have that dog in him to hit yeah. that hole harder than John Emery was going to do it, you know, or he dude, was going to study yeah. his assignments longer um, than anybody else. So when he goes in the game, he wasn't getting thrown right yeah. back out. Right. right, sure. That's why you got the eighteen. Because I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but what I what I'm loving this yeah, year it's worked so got, well for us lately. Right, you know, maybe you got, just drop the. Whole I like tradition. having the younger guys behind, like TDP and Emory. You have Armani Goodwin, oh, yeah. and you have Corey Connor that are going to push them up, rather than having those guys being behind Chris Curry this year. I think yeah. it's going to make a lot of difference, and I think those guys. Good one and Corey Kiner fit better in this offense than TDP or Emory do uh, going forward. I think in that wide open uh, four to five wide offense spread out, I like these guys in space a little bit better than the other guys. It, it reminds me more of Clyde Edwards. Clyde, Clyde's the model, you know, yeah, and yeah, I, I, I feel like Which that's the blueprint. Guessed? Yeah, exactly. Oh, right. And that just shows yeah. you. I mean, what coaching can do. Whenever you can whenever you can put a fence around this state and you get these players in here and you actually coach them up, the sky's the limit. You don't need to recruit anywhere else. And you could see that with a guy like Clyde Edwards Hilaire. If Clyde was in any other offense that we have had at LSU in the past ten years, you never would have heard of him again. Right. And and the fact Justin that he Jefferson. is Right. I mean, like all those guys, you know, like they come here and they were developed, they were put in the right positions and they became one of, if not the best teams in the history of the sport. Right. Um, and, you know, I know the Auburn guy is probably shaking his head, but it's true. And I, I believe that you've got Kiner and Goodwin who are really good running backs in that mold. Uh, yeah, look, right, man, what what oh you want to go go ahead uh, I, I guess I'll get I'll, I'll go uh, I think you you'll y'all will be really surprised with good one actually I'm uh, I'm really excited he was committed to Auburn uh, and then decommitted when we fired Gus which is understandable you know and I respect him for it and like you said that a guy like that they putting don't. him in space and spreading him out he's good and he he loves to hit he he delivers impact of course that was high school yeah. it's a little it was a little bit Whoa. different but he's fast yeah and there no, ain't no he doubt is about good. that fast scat back. Roll. Chunky thighs, chunky yeah. thighs, big old legs. But to say that, big you know, Corey, Corey sweet Kiner, dreads. Corey yeah. Kiner, I know you yeah. guys may be a little bit of. Uh, I'm a historian for LSU football because I'm older. 
Can I guess what you're going to say? What? He's, he's from Cincinnati, which is where Spencer Ware was from. No, that's not what I was going to say. No. He's number Shut 21. Up, he's about to say Dalton Hilliard. Yeah, I'm, he's Dalton Hilliard clone. Yeah. Corey nice. Piner is a Dalton Hilliard clone. He is short, stocky, right. big for the, legs, for just like Dalton Hilliard. Word. They're going to bounce off of him. Um, but he's just a freshman, obviously. Clone is so one of my favorite. For, for as long as I can remember, as, since I've been watching LSU football for over two decades, it has never, ever been due to a lack of skill position players. No, Les yeah. Miles did a You're terrible right. job of utilizing him. Joe Brady came in, and he didn't reinvent the wheel. All he did was figure out how to put put – Find the matchup and just take advantage of it and say, you can you can stop one thing. You can't stop them all. And that's what I'm hoping and excited about with Pete's coming in, a young guy with, I mean, that interview, that pre-whatever, pre-introduction, whatever the hell they call it, interview. I mean, God, yeah. I wanted to go run some routes for that guy after that. Like he's, <laughs> If he's just an that. average play caller, he'll be a head coach in two, a year or two. I mean, yeah. I don't expect to have him around long, but – Getting guys the ball, you know, Clyde Edwards Hilaire was not really anybody that we thought about. You know, Mike and I kept arguing about if Emory was going to jump up and take the spot yeah. from him. You know, right. it's not like it, it, it. No one in the world wanted Jefferson, and Jefferson was as good as Jamar Chase and Terrace Marshall. You know, it's just like LSU has the oh, dudes I, at skill position. Thinking, We've been getting a little beat up at the line of scrimmage, honestly. Yeah, and I, I keep thinking about when you mentioned Jefferson. I keep thinking of a 2018 going into 2019. I mean, I mean, people were high on us, of course, but they weren't like thinking that we were going to be the best team in the ever. Uh, nobody really knew too much about Jamar Chase. Uh, J- Justin Jefferson was a serviceable uh, wide receiver. Nobody knew anything about Clyde Edwards Elaire. Joe Burrow was solid. He wasn't great. Uh, offensive line was okay. Uh, defense was just okay. Like it, the uh, twenty nineteen like changed everything to where mm-hmm. now my perspective will never be the same. <laughs> like oh, yeah. I'm now, I'm yeah. now, I'm now thinking about, okay, last year was what it was, but we've gotten back to the spots. Like we've, I think we figured out hires and I think that has a lot to do with this. We have the talent, like you just said, um, if we have the right scheme in place with a quarterback that can move the ball why can't we get back to the spot? And I'm not saying the best team ever, but like 10 and 2, 11 and 1 shouldn't be out of the realm by any means. You know, During 2019, it just never felt fluky at all. It wasn't like we had to gadget play people. It wasn't like right. it was like, oh, we got that lucky interception. Or, oh, it was just it was just we went out there and beat people's ass because we we had yep. better talent and we had better execution and we didn't Man. make many mistakes. It's I remember, like, I, yeah, remember I agree. Uh, Why can't we come back to that? I remember interviewing uh Chris Blair about that season and he was like even the um the Clemson game where he was he, you know, we were down and he was like, "Oh, we're good." You know, we yeah, he, even okay. in the yeah. press box he was like, "Oh yeah, we're good." Uh, we're we're just got to figure out this mat- matchup, but they can't guard us. Eventually, they're gonna they're gonna. I go think about that game. We're gonna go this way. Yeah, I think about that game all the time in the sense of like, what happens if LSU gets the ball to start that game, and we didn't start on like the quarter yard line two or three times sure, in a row? Right. Oh, oh, yeah. Or what if Clemson game. just scored in that first first possession instead of you yeah. know we thought it was a great thing and they pinned us deep? It's like it could have gotten ugly because those two teams weren't on the same level. No, they weren't. Also, a, a big shout-out for the Dalton Hilliard shout-out. Uh, Grant, the intern, he's just shot me a text. He's a big uh, – His hometown is Patterson, so he's a big oh, Hilliard. Oh, perfect. Guy. Yes. Nice. We can talk yeah, Hilliard. heard about it too many times. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm, a, I'm an 80s guy. So, uh, yeah, I'm the old, I'm the old dude. In the, yeah, uh, he in thinks the Tommy Hodson's a top five LSU player all time. Uh, Tommy Hodson for Heisman is the poster that I had on my wall <laughs> when I was growing up. But um, all right, so we <laughs> we've talked about why receivers in this podcast. Um, what what are your guys' thoughts on the wide receiver core? Because to me, it is like loaded, like I've never seen it. But what? you just have it. You just don't have guys that you. Well, this, yeah, the second part, the second part, you nailed it. Is we haven't seen it, and exactly. and I think that I, I think no, that's what we're yeah. waiting on is is Boutte. I, I think he's a guy that could emerge, and uh, you right. know we saw glimpses of it last season. He wasn't an all around star, but he definitely is capable. Can we depend on 
Keyshawn Butte to be the guy the whole season. We need somebody else as well, though, to step up. Who's number Correct. two? And I think you have a plethora of, of amazing talent. You plethora. have a lot of guys. A, a plethora. Great. <laughs> so, uh, Chris Hilton, I think, is a guy that – listen, before I list off all the freshmen, you know, I, I think that crew is so underrated with this recruiting class. Like, as a whole – Top to bottom, the wide receivers, and then you throw in Besh in there. That's disgusting. I mean, like that. Th- these guys, it's filthily, filthy, filthy uh, rich in talent. I think Besh is going to come on the scene immediately. Him and Cole too. Taylor, That's you know, one A, one B. Those right. guys, the tight ends are going to have so much play. Um, I think that game in itself with those two players are going to really. Um, Make Max Johnson step up and get comfortable early, and they're going to make plays that some of the others can't do yet. I think on the wide receiver side, it's going to be um, more of a development deal. I think you're going to see these guys progress over time. Um, But when they're hitting their stride, you're going to have guys all at the same age group really killing it. You know, Brian Thomas, high point in the ball above everybody. And, you know, you've got uh, Hilton, who's just a smooth runner. Neighbors all of a sudden is turning it on. I mean, I'm sure I'm leaving out a ton of them. But then Dion. Coy, the, I mean, that's the point of this conversation is every time that we talk about wide receivers, we leave a guy out. We leave uh, yep. several guys I know, out. Dre Jenkins, Palmer. Yeah. Palmer Dre is Jenkins. the one we always forget. For real. Is the guy that we always leave we out. We always Coy forget Moore. about Coy Moore. And, he's, and I'm like, is Coy prob- Moore about to get cut? Coy we, went to his birthday party. we went to his birthday party. No big deal. Okay. Oh, yeah. Who was no? Who was the guy? Who was the uh, the other guy at the birthday party that almost beat us up? Van the, Pran, Cedric Van, Van Pran, Pran, the center that went to Georgia. We oh. started live. We started live tweeting right behind him that he where you know what he was doing, and he found it on Twitter, and he was oh, looking shit. around. So we start looking around, you know, we're like who said that? Who hit that? Yeah, yeah, and he went up. He yeah. went up. No, it was uh, Coy Moore. It was his birthday. It, uh, yeah, it he, really he was his birthday. The, on the news. With Garland Gilland, who's wildcat. Wow. But we were. Uh, Garland was not a fan of me. Oh. No. What did you say to him? He was like freaking out because Coy Moore wasn't there. And I was like, Garland, I was like, give us the mic. <laughs> we got 10 minutes in us. And he looked at me in the <laughs> most disgusted <laughs> face you've ever seen in your life. He goes, I think we'll be okay, pal, or something like that. And then just walked yeah. off. It was rough. You like you think this is a joke? Shot. Shoot or shoot, bro. When someone calls you pal and you're not pals. Oh, oh I hit him back with a buddy. I was like, we'll be yeah. right here, buddy. You he should have he used cheap. You should have used cheap. Yeah. Cheap is my thing. No, like, I'll uh, literally be here all night. I think you nailed it with buddy, actually. That's I like my, buddy. My yeah, answer. buddy's good. Hey, I, yeah. listen up, prime minister. You don't want to mess with me. Yeah, that's okay. what you're that's Prime what you're minister. Calm huh? down. Mm. Yeah, turn Jude's mic off. Freaking serious, all right, man. So, all right. Why receiver? We're going back to that. I... I feel like we're so deep there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they John, all can't suck. Like, they literally sure. all can't suck. That's what I say, like, every year. When we don't know what we have at wide receiver, I'm always like, okay, but there's, like, 10 guys that are really talented. Yeah. And it's never the guy you think. At least yeah. one of them is going to step up and be really good, and that's all we need. No, I just I, – I literally just don't worry about skill position. It's right. like I, I, we're, we're going to have the skill guys. I just worry about us getting bullied on the line because when we can't block or when we get zero pressure on the quarterback, that's when we lose. It's not because our wide receivers don't catch the ball. Yeah, sure. it, it, I mean, maybe – Running back out of the backfield can alleviate some of the pressure. Uh, LSU um, did lead the SEC in drops last year. I think they, were, they might have been second uh, to Mississippi State. That's gonna well. Be that's because mm. Finley was fucking throwing to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that and Ensminger was asleep during pass. Uh, pass. Well, uh, drill, I mean, you know, look, I don't, I don't want to talk about the Eric Gilbert saga for too long, but it's like, oh, let's do it. Yeah, let's I look at on. that guy, and it's like. You know, he thought he was going to sign with LSU, come play for Joe Brady, do all this stuff. And instead, we were like, hey, go run a stick route 40 times this game and we'll pepper you a couple times. It's like, I didn't, I can't blame that dude for being like, oh, this isn't really what I signed up for. You know, no, yeah. it's like there was no creativity. And it's not like the Brady offense was super creative, but it was just no. like matchup based. And it was like, hey, Whatever you try to take away, we're fine with it. We're just we're not going to force it. We're going to go to the other guy. It's just like you know, you can look at the the Clemson game where Clemson thought that they could man up Jamar Chase and look right. where that landed them. And then you could go back the game before that where Oklahoma's defense was beyond bad, but it was like they were like, hey, 
we got to stop these Jeff. guys on the outside. Yeah. Let, let's not worry about the slot guy. And Jefferson put five on him in a quarter or whatever. Right. Ended right. Up being, you know, hey. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like it was something special. It was just like, Hey, whatever you try to stop, we're just, we got enough guys. We're, we're which, good. Which that's what I, I hope think, to see. I think with the Jack Besh, what you mentioned were there is matchup problem. Oh, big time. Mm. Uh, and we've talked to him before where he said, um, when you match, try to match him up with a linebacker or a safety, he said it's just too easy. Yeah, uh, and when oh, I he bet. told us that, I was like, "Oh my god, this is going to be great!" No, you can just see him in his clips, man. Like it, he's just—he's different. He's so quick. He's fluid. He's like a gazelle. He's very fluid for his size, especially as a high school kid. Like you just yep. don't see that a ton. Which he—he's probably like six two two thirty at this point. Um, Same man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I—that's our guy. Um, I think he's going to have a huge year. Um, for a freshman, that is. You just need right the up. opportunities, man. If you know, if we run that same offense, which I know we won't, as last year, he probably wouldn't do that much. No, but, but I, know, think, I, I think I think I think Pete's is coming in to develop that. Exactly. I think Pete's knows exactly yeah. what he has, and also Pete's is in that position where he's got to prove himself. He's not coming in to retire. Yeah. You right. know, Jake Pete's is here to utilize this talent and move on. You know, and this I cat's not under- sitting here forever. I also think they understand why they were brought in. Like Pete's and Mangus understand why. Why they were brought in? They were brought in to run J- uh, Joe Brady's offense. There's no, there's no confusion now. Offense, but yeah, and I, I think Ed Ogeron <laughs> understands more than ever that this is this was the formula, right? Like we deviated from the formula with the hires, and that did not work. And we need to go back to those formulas, which are a guy <laughs> like Aranda and a guy like Brady. Well, um, and, you know, we can kind of compare this to 2007 because 2007, uh, less was hands off the offense. They threw right. it all over. 2008 comes in just like last year was for LSU. Everyone Blue, was in disarray. Cars, throws. Right. The offense didn't get re- reeled in at all for the young quarterback. And Les said, shut it down. Yeah, Shut it absolutely. the fuck down. I'm never getting embarrassed like this again. We'll try to win with defense and we'll run the ball. And instead, we have the same thing playing out in front of us a decade later. And yep. Ed's saying, we have to get back. We, you know, we, it's like freaking lost. We have to go back, Jack. We have to get back to that because <laughs> we, you can't shut it down. You can't what shut a, it down at this point. That was we can't just pass that up. That was a great lost analogy. My brain nice. works different than everyone. All right, <laughs> it's, it's just a beautiful mind up here. I couldn't tell you the last time I thought about lost. A lot of pots ago. Please no spoilers. <laughs> um, Grant's just right. texting us all the punchlines on the side. <laughs> is yeah, yeah, is he? Okay. Shout Pretty much man. what happens every day. <laughs> Man, we need to get Grant and Jude and William all together. That uh, yeah, we something have a behind, behind the glass called. podcast. This, this is, is for behind the glass. glass. There it is. This is. A while ago, but look, Eric Gilbert did run a mean stick route. So no, you. <laughs> Dude, I, I, mean, I, mean, I, I could too if I was like six two, two fifty, and could fly. Right. I mean, a, I mean, six, anyone five. could do that. Talk about it's a whatever. matchup problem. Same I mean, thing. that dude not really. Has, yeah, you're right. That dude something. has uh, every yeah, athletic that, ability. Right. Yeah. No. And look, it, there were. I remember a couple times where he would actually catch a stick route, and then he would truck like seven guys, um, and that was part of it. But uh, someone this year that I think is getting so overlooked because of how just electric jack bash looks in you know in like you know video Give me some like kt videos. Videos. yeah video 20 second like clips from a zero defense on the field exactly <laughs> like he just looks fast it's like cobble clips but cole taylor is just getting yep. no like recognition right now no i think he is media. getting a lot of recognition just not from us no they, i no, no listen you're right i i brought him up in some circles and they're just they don't they don't buy it and I, I don't understand where how you couldn't buy a kid of that stature, that size. He's six, six seven, seven. two fifty, right? Yeah, and he's That's moving well. He's you know, a, like you know how hard it is to move yeah. at that size, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, he's even a red if you zone, don't use him at all, you put him exactly throw yeah. him in the red zone and just throw that ball up and yeah. let him go get right. it. Well, no, I think him and Besh side by side. That is dangerous. That's going to yeah, be utilized uh, very heavily. Especially if it's in that Thad Moss role where Thad Moss wasn't necessarily on the line of scrimmage the entire time. He was out wide. He was, you know, all the way wide sometimes. Uh, But then also, if either one of them get hurt, you're kind of fucked at that position. Okay, yes. Debbie Downer. Play True. the Debbie Downer drop right now. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, like but that. I think... Mashburn! Yeah. <laughs> 
There it is. A little late, Sam. A little late. Really well, he pressed it, it early. It, okay. it took it a second. There you go. All right. So, um, John Emery, I can also see out wide, kind of like how you got to get that guy the ball in later. space, man. That's you got to figure out how to get him the ball in space because he is good. I mean, look at that Alabama game. You're just like, oh, who is that? Number four? Well, what? Yeah. No, I don't think he should be out wide. No, no. I'm just saying, get him the ball and no, I know. move yeah. him wherever I'm the hell you want. To what Matt said? No, Matt, I, Matt I, said get him out wide. I think you need to get. He him. needs to catch the ball to the back. It was Matt. out of the backfield. You Fucking can get him out of the backfield. That's fine, but I also feel like that he's you can match not, him up on somebody and run around. Uh, I don't think he's that kind of playmaker. I mean, if if you did that's it with that, that Steve ends me your offense, match him up on somebody oh, and run around. Get him out there. There you go, Matt. What if they got with three foul? I don't think he's that kind of pass okay. catcher that you can do. That. We forgot about Kirkland. Yeah, no, I, that was actually Kirkland. he's actually it, my pick to be the second best wide receiver. Whoa, this year that's a I know that's a hot take. That's a hot Dude, take. Y'all were talking hot takes game? earlier. Matt just wants to. Wow. No, he's great. He's great. It's just I know it's you didn't have all these other guys coming. Matt just in, wants but... to be like the Colin Cowherd of like LSU sports talk. Oh, give me a break. He just wants to. Yeah. He just wants hot. No, sticks. there's somebody else that's taking that role. We'll John Trey Kirkland oh, is Cody like was. avocados. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry, I thought we were going Calvert on this. Yeah, I thought it, we were going to Calvert. That was perfect. <laughs> yeah, Cody Worsham is definitely got to squeeze. Yeah, him a king of hot takes, dude. Cody <laughs> Worsham. <laughs> Cody Worsham. <laughs> um, okay, so we before we go on to the defensive side, I think we. We have an old man take of the week. We do we do different segments every week. We're, we'll have you join in on this one because I think you'll enjoy this. Um, the old man take of the week this week is uh, we have a graphic up to okay. Sam. Uh, Wait, what is it? Where is it? Mm. All right. I did so, see that. Billy Cannon. Would Billy Cannon start for LSU today? Yes. Yes. That's what I, I say. Think. Yes. That's I, I the old say yes. man. That's I say yes the old too. man take of the week. I say yes too. But at the line, dude wasn't bad. <laughs> like, I'm not <laughs> saying he was bad. <laughs> he would be a starting linebacker. So he for would today's start. Team. No, no, no. Boy, okay. Linebacker. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about like Jared Small possibly starting. Like yeah, Billy exactly, Cannon would absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. What what was Billy Cannon's height and weight? Here? I mean, put Billy Cannon like in a workout two, program. 220, right? No, 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 no. Here's yeah, wait till Moffat gets a hold of him. Exactly. You, wait, wait. Do you put do you put him in like is he like born in nineteen ninety six and he just yeah. goes he just develops no, or no. is he like today like Billy Cannon from nineteen fifty eight? You <laughs> plop him no. in. This is so, this is so confusing. That's yeah. too that's right. too deep. Just and he's like, what is this? We're just plopping him in. No, Billy you Cannon's plop not him born. In. Just plop right. him in. Yeah, I think it. I think it doesn't make a difference. I think it's the same cat, same helmet, same football, face buddy. mask. So he's gonna start over like Ty Davis Price at no. running back. He'll be the week one. No, 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 he'll be, but he'll be somewhere on the field. Okay, so like you can't keep him off the field. He'll be. Maybe he'd be a great like safety guy. Yeah, like he'd he'd be be so good. Good. I think that's a bigger slap in the face than he's saying he's not like, on the team. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd be a good. No, gun. dude. Great kickoff, Langlo man. is made no. for kickoff. Like a gunner. Who is it? Lang? Is it Langlo? 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 Matthew Langlo? Dude, yeah. where are you from? Langlo yeah, is. is you don't want to know. <laughs> Langlo is gonna light somebody up this year, and I'm gonna. Yeah. Tweet I'm gonna. T- I'm gonna. I'm gonna tweet you. Langlo just lit somebody up. I'll tell you what. Our interns are freaking on it. Your guys are just sitting there hanging out. Grant's just messaging. High, you know, stats six one two zero seven. Six one two zero seven. That's a beast. That is. Hey, I was pretty close. Two zero seven. I didn't think he was that big. 207 and no, he's not working out. Shit. If well, look, I, if Billy Cannon's on the team, we're not worried about Bug Strong or Mike Jones. It's Cannon. <laughs> what? We can't have a 207 last, middle linebacker. His last name he is He would have bulked up. He would have bulked yeah, up. Moffitt. 207 was huge. Yeah, he'd, he'd, be, he'd, he'd be like before. a rover, you know, it, it would be sick. Okay. It would be sick. All right. And he would also return punts. Y'all are starting to sway me a little bit. Um, he'd be a linebacker. So you were wait, you were saying he wouldn't nine. be able that okay. he's not going to start. He yeah. might make the team. Yeah, I'm he's not going to start. Um, I, Matt's I, I, putting him on McNeese. Huh? You're putting him the on Heisman McNeese. Trophy winner. Might make right. the team. The Heisman Trophy winner for from 58 yeah. will, not, will not make the team, uh, will not be a starter in 2021. Yes. Now, flip, different Maybe question. 2020, Would Billy yes, Cannon definitely start over DeMond Clark? 
<laughs> would Billy Cannon embrace the mullet, or do you think he would stick with the buzz? Oh, no, he'd have flow. Oh, he'd, he'd have yeah. flow. I think he would. I think he was a swag guy. Um, no, I, I, I saw a couple buzz. of he's, he I saw a couple like a pictures with him. With like, it looked like there was gel before there was gel. There was all kind of things going on. Rub I think some dirt would, in it, type of thing. Yeah, product. Right. I feel like now, for the sake would, of the hypothetical, he has to stick with the buzz. He has to stick with his whole demeanor that he kind of like a classic ends minger. Exactly. So is he a time yeah, traveler? Okay. Did he play in 58 and now he's in 2021? Yeah, right. well, you know? yeah. No, so yeah. He yes, he can do it all. Can we talk about the, uh, what ends minger would have done with him and his offense? Oh my God. He would have had a field day with him and his offense. Uh, no, he wouldn't um, have started over Clyde. Can we talk about the racial <laughs> tensions he might bring to a locker <laughs> okay, room? All right. Easy, easy. <laughs> All right, all right. Next topic. Off. Next topic. <laughs> oh, sorry. All right, defense. We got to talk about defense. It's been the hot button, obviously, uh, since 2020. Um, obviously, we have two great corners. We've already talked about the defensive line. Any other thoughts on like linebackers and Baskerville like, just rolled? runs weird, man. I I just don't understand the way he moves. I think he, there's just something there in his hips. I just don't get it. I think Clark been on this on this slant for a long this. time. Oh, I've never noticed this about basketball. Wait, explain what you're talking about. Is there like a hit a giddy up? You've never noticed how he moves? I actually have not. Yeah, you gotta watch it. it there's something missing. It's just not all there. You know, I don't I don't know what it is, but you can you'll see it. You'll figure it out. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go um, watch an old game and try to see what Yeah. I, I think he's a he's a guy coming out of Evangel that I loved. You know, and yeah. I thought he was just like a heat seeking missile, you know, like he, he's yep. one of those guys that you want in the middle and, uh, you, you know, you're not going to go wrong. It's just, I don't know. He doesn't move side to side quick enough. There's something missing there. I, I, I'm hoping that he can power through that or whatever deficiencies he has there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clark, on the other hand, I, I think he's a guy that's just waiting I, I don't understand how you could just regress that bad. I understand like as a whole, we regressed as a team, but just there was so there was too many times with the games that I didn't turn off in the middle uh, that I just kept over and just Clark, like, God damn it, Clark, like over like, and over. Shit. Yeah. Well, it's just the most basic stuff. Like you met playing high school football, you you ran angle drills, like you know, pursuit drills, taking yep. the proper angles. Like he that just he didn't would take exist. Like a J. He would like all take of a sudden like a J yeah. route to the person. <laughs> it, it it just did <laughs> not exist. Route. Yeah. He was playing soft, didn't make any tackles. But it's like, how do you just turn it off? I think if you could get someone to turn it on for these guys, they're very talented studs. Now with that being said, you bring a guy in like Strong, who I have heard great things about. Mike yep. Jones produces some great depth there. Oh. Um, you've got uh, – yeah, there you go. I was waiting for that. But yeah. you've got a world of talent He's behind them. Right. I think they're going to be pushed. And I think that might be uh, the ticket to flip that switch for Clark and for Baskerville. Um, I don't think Baskerville's that far away. I think he's right there. I think he could fill in. Um, but I think with Clark, that competition behind him, um, you know, the not, hey, you're 18, that doesn't mean all of a sudden you're going to make a play. Like, you, right. you know, you have to no, actually does. produce. No, and uh, <laughs> so I don't know. I think that's a weakness. We talked about what position are you worried about? I mean, I think linebacker, there's some valid concern there where you've got some bodies, but unless they make a play, I mean, look at every level or every position group on that defense, you are loaded. And if you want to go back to being a stargazer, I mean, there's five stars on every level with the exception of the linebacker crew. You need them to um, exceed their expectations right yeah, now. I'm, I, I just, trying to, I'm trying to think of guys that are linebackers that are, are on the bench that we haven't really talked about, which would be like would. Josh White, um, <clears throat> Jared, Jared, Jared Sampa, Jared, Jared Small. Small. No one talks about that. Uh, Coach Oden never mentioned – well, He's always hurt. Well, Sampa's well, always hurt. He runs weird too. Hey, so Jared Small, Carey, like carries bricks around campus. Okay, so so that. Jared Small being a guy that's a right. walk on from Catholic High. Yeah, and love him. Like, are I you couldn't... are you upset about that at all? Like, not upset. You, like, no, I'm not upset. I think it's definitely one of those deals where you have. I mean, it's obvious you have to 
be a little concerned that the other guys have not beat him out, which I, I don't buy the whole he's starting, though. I, I think that's just no. Ed and everybody talking like, hey, congratulations, Jared. Like, you're playing really well for a walk-on. And then it's just right. kind of evolved to this whole, oh, he could start this season. I I was I even – I sent out a tweet uh, during the spring game that he deserves playing time. The kid looks great, but do I want him to be our main guy? Like, no way. Right. And right. I couldn't be more biased towards Jared. I graduated with him from Catholic. Catholic. Right. I know him actually fairly well. Uh, we were not, I wouldn't say good friends, but we were decent friends. I had a few classes with him. We talked a lot, but, um, and he's a great guy, so but Brad. look, it's a great story. And there's, there oh, are right. times and, where walk on guys come in, they physically mature, they get better sure. and they can, they can play. No, the I mean, dude looks I, good. You know, yeah, right. exactly. Like, I'll tell you, we like, got to put the best two or three or however many out there. And if he's one of them, I sure shit hope he's ready. I yeah. legitimately never even noticed him when he played in games for Catholic High, and I went to every game. It was small, like yeah, and literally, no, pun intended, right? But, uh, um, yeah. And so when I heard he was like walking on at LSU, I was like, wow, I actually didn't even know he was like good enough to do that. And then when he got a scholarship, really? I was like, "Holy I, shit, he must really, really be I mean, really I think some guys develop late, you know, and yeah, that yeah, might be one of those deals. But I'm just hoping that's the case. That Moffat you know, got his hands on him. Yeah, and I, well, <laughs> this Mo- I mean, just a- just wait, wait till Moffat gets his hands. Well, on I don't him, think you know? he can use that. That that was like our one big interview. So we have you can't say really- you can't say that anymore. <laughs> you can't say got his hands on. You can't it's say like that he anymore, worked out right. with him. That's right. Well, that's the old man take of the week, all right? That's right. <laughs> if anyone would have told us there was something wrong with that, we would have not mentioned it. It was the same. No, not that, that there's anything wrong with right. that. Jesus. I know. I, yeah, I Plead wouldn't. ignorance. Hey, hey, hey. That's right. Relax. Um, so okay, so. Not Penn State. Relax, boys. <laughs> what kind of shoes are you rocking over there, Matt? Uh, I got the, uh, get the CJs. CJs on. Chris okay. Jackson's, the old yeah, school. I, uh, <laughs> Jude. Old yeah, I, I got, got? got Kobe 10. She's got the Kobe's on. Um, they don't are those high cold. tops or is that just your socks? Yeah, Who, me so, or him? No, those are those are Kobe's. Jude. Oh, they are. Yeah, they have like a, yeah. got like a sock in the shoe. We were, we were asked them why don't they make those anymore, and we asked if it was because Kobe was dead. Yeah. This one, this one, the last one. Yeah. Either. That's a funny show. An answer. He didn't have an answer for us. <laughs> funny uh, anyway, yeah, we can't talk about strength coaches getting hands on him, but you know, we can talk about playing. Yeah, going we go out. You should have been here on the last episode. You shouldn't. Oh, have been, he shouldn't have been. We here. weren't invited. The last episode, uh, Jude, Jude wanted to kill a guy. No, so, uh, no, Jude, no. That was I saw that no. Brick killed a guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that escalated quickly. Um, you should probably lay low. Find yeah. a safe house. So. <laughs> All right, uh, secondary for LSU. Um, any thoughts on obviously corner, but the like corner depth possibly is an safety? issue. Yeah, uh, obviously, safety. obviously, I had a big retweet by Tyron Matthew um, when I threw NBA. out oh, that yeah. the depth yeah. chart. That's that the right. depth chart I was, like, was pretty sick. Look at that. that was great. Man. Yeah, thanks. I got the juice now, according to you guys. So, um, but with that being said, um, it was kind of a spur of the moment thought that I think it was kind of being glossed over. The amount of talent we have behind the starters is just, it, it's pretty sick to think about. And I think Major Burns being one of those guys um, that we pulled through, which going back to one of our interviews, speaking of Moffat, we interviewed major Burns when he was first committed. It was probably the worst interview we've ever had from a football camp. (laughs) Yeah. It's like he'd had no cares, like zero shits. So I actually ran into major Burns the week he was committing before he committed. uh, I played pickup basketball with him and uh, we were trying, we were also trying to get him on that week and I guess he was too busy on pot of gold. Yeah, yeah well, for about cool. five minutes. Yeah, he had to pick up his brother or somebody. He's like, no, from- I'm picking up Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. Like, you know, we could hear. We're like, like hey, like, we're live, <laughs> even though we weren't live, obviously. But we just tried to make it, you know, make him hurry up. But anyway, Major Burns coming back, I think, is a like a major addition uh, to the team. I think he starts at safety. Um, and you've got guys like. I, I think this is the season where you've got guys like Todd Harris and, and Flott 
um, uh, guys that have experience that their position is not secure. I, I think we have to play the best guys. Sage Ryan being back there, uh, yeah. Major Burns, Ward being able to play multiple positions. I think that's the key to this depth chart with McLuthern. Like these guys rotate around. Everybody plays yeah. a spot. If one guy goes down at nickel, we've got guys with experience to slide right in there. And then obviously uh, you've got Stingley and Ricks who are the top two tandem in the nation. I mean that you don't need to need to talk about that. The depth alone um, is is just incredible. Yeah, Possibly yeah I, like I really like McLaughlin. Two corners in the lead in the in the yeah. country. Yeah, easily. Oh, yeah, for sure. Than two. Yeah. For sure. And I think McLaughlin's a kid that you can throw in there. Like I was, I know he got beat and didn't make every single play, but when I watched him last year, I was like, damn, man, this kid's going to be a player. He's long. Yeah. He he can, he's got range. He seems to be able to kind of locate the ball. Like I, I always talk about this. It's like, I always think it's so interesting. The guys that can come in from high school and play as a freshman and the speed of the game, not really like it's not noticeable. Right. And I feel like he was just one of those guys that looked like he was like kind of already ready for the speed of the game. And, you know, as he's going to keep getting older, I, I think I really do. I think the kid's going to be a star. Well, do, do you feel like last year there was a different, it was a change from the Arkansas game on where McLaughlin Jay Ward, all of a sudden, the youth. big impacts where they weren't they weren't really seen too much before that before that season, but but all of a sudden they just I don't know if something well, clicked or something yeah, changed or what. We, I know we don't want to sit on twenty twenty. Sure, um, it's but, a positive though. We can talk. About it. Yeah, it is positive because when you look at who shined that season it was the younger guys it was yeah. the guys that had something to prove um that wanted to take advantage of the series that they got in you know what right. can we do this series i don't know if i'll ever get this chance again and well, you and saw it, that it switch mid-season it was like everyone yeah. else was giving up touchdowns who gives a shit if you get burned like try right. to make a play and right I, I and really he did it like and Ward, like, playing like more fearless all those guys did get burned at times, but they didn't hang their head and just sulk on the sideline and say, screw it, this season doesn't matter anyway. They went back out there and made an awesome interception. Or a guy right. like Eli Ricks comes in, and we talk about having dog in you. That kid was born with it. I mean, he comes in and just lights a fire. And you want right. that to be contagious on the team. And if you have that from multiple players in the defensive backfield, I mean, sky's the limit. Yeah, yep. Ricks is that perfect guy to have in your secondary yeah, you know, we talked a little bit about 2011. That 2011 team was obviously awesome, but good God, did they have swag. I mean, they were the most yep. confident players you've ever seen. And Rick has that walk where it's like, I'm 6'10", mother, you know, I'm here. Right. Anyone want to try me? And it's like that kind of stuff. Well, obviously, Stingley's incredible, but Stingley's not not a flashier guy. He's not going to be getting up in people's faces. Yeah. Ricks just has that little bit of like fu in him, and I love yeah. it. I'll take the fifteen yard penalty, man. Like, and they it's kept worth not it. throwing the fifteen yard penalty. For uh, oh, he'll get them this he year. Got away with like so much shit last year, man. He'll be yeah. horning down every team. Oh my god, yeah. dude! Yeah, oh, playing yeah. Florida, he's just going to be frigging horns down in them. <laughs> That's I true. love it. I love it. I, I think we you. I really it. do think you do have to have one of those guys. We should do it on every touchdown with them coming into the league. We should for sure. What do you um, think about them coming into the league? By yeah, the way, yeah, the Texas and OU. What do you thought? I'm not looking. I, you know, let's do it next year. Like I don't. Let's do it I'm next in. year. Let's get it going. I mean, I love the pod right. system. I love the idea. Fuck yeah! I I want LSU to play more teams. I think it's just it gets a yeah. little boring when you're going to play your east your one you know you're going to play florida and then you're going to rotate one from the east like i, I want to play everyone i want to play right. kentucky every few years i want to go to tennessee i want to play georgia every few years like i just i really hate this whole like we're going to play all these west schools every year and then you get to play one different one you know we can go to oh we're going to nashville guys we'll be back there in 2033 so enjoy yeah. it like i think yeah. that's bullshit no, I think I don't know if you guys were listening a few years ago. We we took a trip for my bachelor trip. We went to Tennessee, and that was by far one of the best road experiences I've ever I've ever had. Was, was that the rain game, that hurricane, yes, yeah. hurricane monsoon. I was yeah. wearing khakis. Bad idea. Um, <laughs> I went. I went and took a piss. It wasn't raining. I I couldn't open the door. The rain and the wind was so hard. After I went to the bathroom, like I literally was like <laughs> stuck in the bathroom. Good news, we got front row seats after. After that, we walked everyone all the way left. down. Everyone left. We were yeah. right in the front row. We had a nice um, – God damn it. I forgot the quarterback's name. Who was the cat? Number two, uh, Narcisse. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, Lowell Narcisse. Lowell Narcisse. Lowell right. Narcisse. He was very close to us uh, during that game. Oh, I was we kind of chirped him a few times. I was screaming at Brennan, get that shoulder warm, Miles. He's yeah. Like, he's <laughs> Why it was a fun time. Here? But to go, to go back to the point, just that experience should be more often. And I think if you can have that experience in Austin, if you can, you know, play in Oklahoma, I mean, like those teams, listen, they're Oklahoma in particular, not Texas. That's a joke of a program right now. Um, but but Oklahoma, I mean, look, it's it's good competition. It's great competition. Um, but I, I don't think anyone's afraid of that. I mean, we play yeah. Alabama every year. I I, 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 don't, I don't mind having the best teams in the country in your conference. We're used to it. I'm an LSU, I, I, like I'm an LSU fan, but I love college football. And that adding those dudes to the SEC just means every week there's one, there's another game that you just have to watch and see. And whether it's Oklahoma, Alabama, Oklahoma A and M, whatever you want, like I'm excited for that because in, I don't, I don't think it's stopping here. I think the Big Ten's going to try to go add some teams. I think the Pac-12 is going to try to get some something, something because no one gives a shit about them. Right. I, I'm just here for exciting football games. I love sitting on the couch on Saturday and being like, oh, well, what time? Oregon's about to play. Oh, let's go. You know, it's just like I love watching football. And right. it also yeah. makes the fiddlers of the AM crowd squeal a little bit. Yeah. I think, that's honestly, beautiful. I don't think it's great for LSU. Just like I don't no. think adding AM helped very much. It's like we used to be able to go into Texas and say, hey, you want to play big boy football? Come to LSU. Your parents can still come to the games. We're going to whoop some ass. Then AM comes in there and it's a little, oh, well, you know, you can stay at home now and then throwing Texas in there. Like, I definitely right. think. I definitely think it's not the best. I think LSU can win with Louisiana talent, but it's, you know, I I think it's not the best for us going, going forward. No, but recruiting is changing at such a rapid pace where I I don't think proximity to home or what conference you're in is going to be that big of a deal moving forward in the next few years when it comes to NIL. I think conference will. I think conference will. I, I agree with you about going from home. You can watch anybody on TV in any week. Well, I do think eventually it's like, I think about it. I love what you said about how you don't think about it from Thank LSU's you. point of view. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Yeah, no problem. Um, I think about it from a college football point of view as well. And like how this L- Texas and OU moving to the SEC, and then you already see there's f- rumors of, I don't know if this was actually confirmed or not, but true. Clemson and Florida State trying to reach Everybody out. Wants to come to the how LSU fun State. would that Everyone be to watch wants to every to the year? SEC. Right. And then that leads straight to the Power Five just breaking away. Mm-hmm. I agree. From I think that's what we're going towards for sure. Super League. Yeah, and what that I, just what, yeah. that just means every single week that there's great college what, football what games. I thought there's no was gimme games. You would every up, every week's a playoff. Yeah, you right. would have four 16 team. Yeah, uh, divisions, and everybody's just got to like figure out who, who goes where, uh, which it, which could get done pretty easily if they just did it the right way, but. Uh, yep. Everybody, everybody's talking about joining the SEC now, and I'm like, okay, that that's not necessarily what I don't think was intended here. Right? I don't well, think like, who cares? Are. Who cares right. if it's like Ohio State ends up winning the title? How fun is it going to be to watch ten weeks of those games? Yeah. like every year. Like, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't care. I like it's going to yeah. be awesome. Literally every week, you're going like, to have, have three Central matchups Michigan, that are just heavy hitter playoff East. type games. Like all these teams on the schedule this year, that it could all it could just be all power four. I think it was what we were saying, right? Right, power, power four. four teams. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm that you could go with. I'm uh, all for the Premier League, but you know, yeah, I love it. Well, we, I love the think. idea of relegating people. Yes, that's, I that's absolutely our, that's our love deal it. Is the relegation? I we, drool we love every that time idea. I hear relegation. I don't really like soccer, but I think it's like it's, it's highly entertaining. That's just like, like the, I'm not. That's the best way you can run a league. In my opinion, no, it incentivizes actually playing and giving right. a shit. Right. Uh, no, I, I I love the idea of that. I don't know if that would ever fly or ever be able no, to get won't. put into place. But like, I, I agree. I think that'd be so fun. Right. And like, the best part of it is that like, even for the lower tier games of like the worst team in your league is playing the other worst team in the league, they still those that's that game still means a lot now. It, it makes it more interesting. The loser of that game gets kicked out. Like that's awesome. No, I mean you see you see the NBA trying to figure out some sort of way to make games worth more valuable, you know, more valuable late in the season. I mean, I definitely think that's the way to go. There's there's so much money in sports now, and I I know it has been for a while, but it's just getting more and more ridiculous that 
you know, these these people who are broadcasting the games, they don't want to see a bunch of teams out there that don't give a shit and aren't trying. And I'm not saying that's necessarily what's happening now, but like you said, it brings doing something like that where it's like, hey, these guys are out of the SEC if they lose this week. Like, that, right. I got to oh, watch. How I have to watch. I Hell yeah. All, like, I'll know? be tuned in for Kentucky versus Vandy. And, I'm kind of bullish we, on Kentucky this we, year, honestly. Oh, you yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I don't think oh, you know. Oh shit! I, 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 like, I think they're going to surprise a little bit. Until I heard about this new quarterback that they got, I don't even know his name, but just like he looks like he's bananas hole. Yeah. Yes. That guy. Yeah. That's why I'm bullish. Last name Lewis. <laughs> that that same. I Will wasn't Will until Lewis. I saw that guy. Yeah. I'm like, I'm Will in. Levis. Oh yeah. What satellite? Yeah, we we weren't we weren't on him until we saw that, and then we we're like, oh shit, this this yeah. guy. That, great. that Tennessee like, quarterback looks like a little bullish as well. My oh, gosh, does he? He looks like a he literally literal bull. looks like an yeah. actual bull. Yeah. Um, I'm interested okay. to see what Tennessee. Tennessee seems like a dumpster fire, but I do kind of like Hypel, so I'm I like interested Heupel to see how that goes. Right. Yeah, it's black like, dudes, they, white oh. white tape. The the spat game is strong up in Knoxville. Yeah, they they, they just have to throw the ball around. Like just crazy, like crazy. Just throw it around. Let's get crazy. Um, that's that's the kind of hypo uh, offense they should be running. Yeah. I think them and them Mississippi State, Tennessee and Mississippi State, they're never going to be good, but they probably will sneak up on one team every year and just hang fifty on them real quick. I but think how the um, hell did that happen? I think Mike yeah. Leach is in for a rude awakening this year, and it's going to be hit hard. I don't um, agree at all. I, I just I'm, think I'm it's, not big on it's, State at all. No, I, I think it's so hard. Like I love Leach as much as any person on the planet. Like just a highly entertaining individual cool and innovator yeah. of the Different offense. Which, it's like you keep looking around. It's like what games are they going to win? What, right? They're not going to beat <laughs> Ole Miss. They're not going to beat. You know, it's just like they may. Do they still have that quarterback. One. Who's their quarterback? Yeah, uh, Will Rogers. Is Will Rogers is the guy but this year. He's pretty good, right? Not, Remember when KJ Costello uh, was a Heisman finalist it. for a week and a half? That's right. I don't want I mean, to talk about that. I think he. I think he's, he had more yardage <laughs> against LSU than he probably had the rest of the season. Well, you know, there's a quarterback like a competition a in Starkville. Uh, Rogers isn't the bona fide starter right now. Really? Came out. Yeah. Really? Oh, wow. He played well towards the end of the season, though, right? He's all right. Huh. Yeah. Any other surprises in the SEC that y'all are, y'all are thinking about? I mean, I think Ole Miss is that big surprise, but I think that's kind of been sniffed out. I, I think other than that, yeah, I think Mississippi State is the only one that you might see happen. But I like like y'all said, I just I can't I can't see that happening. No. I think Arkansas is going to be a good team. Do I think I'm they're going to beat you. anybody? Probably not. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> I think I'm be better. I, I like Sam Pittman a it's lot. It's like that's how low right. the SEC is. Yeah. I like the worst team in the SEC West. But I, they, I don't know who they're going to beat. Yeah, do y'all do? Do y'all do like a little pickums tournament? Uh, no. Good, we can. We Maybe could. we will. I mean, if you want to, damn know. it, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> those are the games, though. Those are the those are the ones we, that make or break a pickums competition. Is the Vandy's an and Kentuckys the over under win totals uh, for different teams uh, for Vegas odds? So. We obviously LSU eight and a half. We're we're smashing that one. So um, yeah, yeah, way up on that one. That's an over. Um, I think Ole Miss will be the most fun team. I think they're the most must see team in the SEC right. this year, possibly the country, yeah. because they're going to score almost every time they touch the ball, and they're probably going to give up some scores every time like, they touch the right. ball. I mean, what are right. those? What are those totals going to look like? It's going to be are they going to be cool like 88, 88? Are they going to yeah, put a freaking be. 90 team total or not team total total on a game? I think you Could will. Because I have to bet the Alabama. over. Like I literally have to bet the over if it's mean, Alabama. I that, can't was, not. that was at 100, 100 points, right? Like yeah, that, easily. It was ridiculous. I think uh, it was, yeah. I th- yeah, it was like. All right. How fun, how fun to cheer for an over at 90. It's dude. <laughs> the whole season, I think, is going to be so much fun, especially with fans in the stands now. Hopefully. Um, yeah, I think we will. I think you will. I think we will. Right? I think we're looking like, good. Um, I think you'll have masks on, um, but I think you will have fans in the stands. They're, yeah, but I They're also don't think all. it's going to be enforced that hard. That's going to be a slow popcorn eating for me. Yeah, it's it's going to be like that uh, <laughs> that guy that's doing the security wands where he's not even touching right. anyone. There's going to be like, <laughs> no, there was already there just was, no. Right. There was one at the basketball games this year though that was like hardcore. That guy they was a stickler. I know section. exactly who you're talking. No, I heard about. The, I heard the baseball the baseball crowd was pretty rough as well. Yeah, the baseball was really? yeah. Uh, yeah. The basketball guy was like you. Well, look, put I your learned, mask on. Like, I learned the <laughs> over your nose. You just you, <laughs> you get a bottle of water. You never. Never finish it. 
Yeah. And then you just keep it right around your lips the yeah. whole game. Exactly. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of time. It's so away. good once I think your I, lips. Right. Yeah. I think we're going to be in. I think it'll be fine. I think, uh, you know, the experiment at UCLA is going to be uh, a, a crazy one over in California. But oh, I think sure. once it's, I think once we're home, I, I think it's going to be. I was worried uh, about that one. I was worried. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still not sold that that game's going to be played in L.A. I, I, really? for so, I just keep. I, I don't. I mean, it's I don't in, know. It's anything. really close. I know. I know. Every we'll freaking day they day shut more shit down. The same way. Yeah. They have a strong yeah. logistics guy. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna reroute the plane to Las Vegas and land it right there in that big old stadium. Oh, oh yeah. that would be great. Uh, we'll play there. In the uh, what's it? I don't what, know what what's called. that stadium called? It's called um, the Roomba. Are you guys going to UCLA? No. No. Our old buddy who started the podcast with us, Schneid, moved out to LA and he was like, everyone come. And then now, you know, he moved away. Couldn't take couldn't take it out there. Um, (laughs) none of us are going, right? Thank God. You're gonna go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Allegiant Stadium. Allegiant. A Legion. Do you have there he goes. (laughs) Grant is just all over it. Do we need to know? I know it makes you feel you realize how shitty your interns are now, Grant. huh? Yeah, yeah I'm all guy. about that. Grant, how much come do you on. pay Grant? <laughs> I'm ready. None your business. <laughs> 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 all right. We appreciate it. Brett and Mike, uh, pot of gold. Um, when when are you guys three fifty? When's the next uh <laughs> yeah, about three fifty. Uh let's take him down real quick. Uh, he didn't want he didn't want to blast that out. Um yeah. When, when's the next podcast? <laughs> uh, are you guys doing regular ones now, weekly, or how's that work? Yeah, we're we're trying for weekly. We, we you know, after last season, we kind of we took a step back and realized we we don't need to hold ourselves to a schedule. Right. Um, I think that I don't know if that played a part in Being we a just coward. weren't <laughs> right <laughs> according to some of those reviews. No, I I think it just we weren't as enthusiastic uh obviously with yeah. the situation that the team was going through, but we also kind of over a couple years we started a trend of a pregame and a postgame and it just kind of it, it got boring yeah. for us. Yeah. And I think now we want to look at it more of we're going to try to do a once a week podcast. If we can do more awesome, but we're going to try to stick to once a week. And just kind of make it a fully loaded pre and post everything all together and just kind of chat it up kind yeah. of like this, like a big riff session and not really hold ourselves to a schedule. I think this weekend we might be doing our, our LSU preview. Um, uh, but if not, it'll probably be sometime next week. But we will shoot for a once a week podcast. Sweet, man. I, I, I was big fans of you guys uh, before we even started doing ours. So we appreciate you guys coming on for sure. Uh, we, maybe we can get back on um, during the season, or we can kind of come to you guys, whatever you want to do. Yeah, uh, yeah no, no chance, but all right, cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we, we talked about it. I know we we joke about it, but Brett and I have talked a lot about when we first started. Um, as we developed over the years, there was a lot of people that started their own podcast. I mean, it's it's easy to do, and uh, but so it's not. COVID. COVID yeah, was I mean, season baby, like it, it was, was huge. It blew up. Yeah. It's just it's not easy to maintain, and oh, so right, we right. we definitely respect you guys. You, you know, if we were gonna go on anyone's show, um, it was gonna be you guys one day. I so just that. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, and just to kind of cap it off, you know, it's like we started the podcast because as you get older, you stop hanging out with your friends as much. And I was just like, Mike, we got to do something to hang out. You know, it's like we'll we'll text about LSU and we'll talk about it. But it's like, you know, it's like we never see each other. And so it was one of those things where it's like it was something to get together. I mean, Mm -hmm. dude, we we recorded the first one and Mike was like, post it, post it. I'm like, dude, I don't know. We're going to get crushed. <laughs> Four people are going to listen. And it just kind of took off from there. Right. Yeah. And dude, you know, people seem to like, like it. Right. Yeah. I've actually never thought about it. Like so that. Like well, I, that, Matt's my uncle actually. And so right. I think I since we started doing the podcast, I've never <laughs> seen, <laughs> wait what? Yeah, no, don't worry. Uh, keep going, keep going. Since we started the podcast, I don't know if I've ever seen you as often as me yeah this past year since we started doing podcast when i when we first started doing this uh we started another podcast called since we're on the subject and it's me and two other friends that are my age and we're all 40s and uh one of us lives in hong kong and it's not me um the other guy um so we we just text all the time and we would text all through the the 2019 season all that kind of stuff we would always just text and we were big football fans but we obviously talked about 
music, movies, all kinds of stuff. And we started doing a podcast. And while we were doing it, we were talking about doing a football podcast at the same time. But that's how it started was just we had a text thread that we thought was funny that yeah. should be just like, let's just hang out. And like, yeah, it becomes something and you don't realize what it's becoming while you're doing it. So it's very yeah. addicting. Very fun. Yeah, it is. And it, now this one has become bigger than the other one. Uh, they'll probably right. laugh at me for saying that. But um it's it, LSU football is just a whole different animal, obviously. Well, it's so. just so easy to talk about whenever you're a For true sure. fan, you can just sit back and, and, and riff and vibe like this. So you guys are doing great. Yeah. Appreciate I, I y'all. think the funniest thing I ever read about uh pot of gold is on tiger droppings. Cause you know, uh, he goes to tiger droppings. I don't know. I there. actually, I don't, we're not allowed that. there. So yeah, <laughs> no, I know you're you not. Like I, know you're not. There. <laughs> I see that all the time. Uh, but I saw some, there was one thread about, I, I only go on tiger droppings when I know that there's a thread about like us. that mentions us in right. there. How vain uh, of you, and, but okay, go on. Sure. And, right, right. right. No, I mean, it's like Voldemort I mean, website. Been on there it's, twice. It's, yeah. it's time to be honest. Uh, <laughs> um, that was a good one. Whoever said that off that camera. Was a, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, some what someone said, it was is so stupid, but uh, they said the the market share of bat of uh, of LSU Podcast. sports podcasting that the pot of gold left. Uh, the <laughs> one team one podcast has quickly seized and oh, taken yeah. complete market share. Right, that wow. was our, that was our entire. <laughs> so we I appreciate like, you we like, for that. Pot well, of gold is taking a break, guys. We need to start now. <laughs> yeah. well, but you know, whenever it started, you couldn't post a th- anything about podcast on there. I mean, dude, the oh, amount yeah, of times that. Quick. Yeah, they would just, and it was never us. We didn't care. We tried in the beginning. They DM'd or whatever. Private message was like, hey, no promotion. We're like, whatever. And then other people would post about it, immediately get kicked off and everything. Oh, like Lord. so many people would like DM us pictures and was like, they think they think we're you. And like, it was like the private We never, we them. never once promoted on Tiger Droppings. Not we, once. Yeah, we, we went to post it and they were like, no. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But like, Yeah, and, and then now, all of a sudden all the fans now. started doing it. And the yeah. cool thing is now is that so many, like you, you see threads like that on there from now on. You know, it's like it's become more of a common thing. Mike and I did it. We thought we'd get crushed. And of course, some people think we're idiots. So we, I, I don't, you know, it's like, I don't care. I, right, I don't care. We don't What's plan the anything. One? The, uh, the key and peel, like, uh, Obama, oh, yeah. like, buy uh, you something everybody's... posted that. Who's that? You, his name, his name on Twitter is buy you something. Oh, buy yeah. you Brian? No, 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 no. no. Buy you Brian. Whatever Dude. happened to Josh Lemoyne? Josh Lemoyne Dude, was, what happened to him? Yeah, off uh, the grid. Time podcast, right? Yeah. Buy you Bingle blog. Grant just see that's buy why that's Bingle why Grant's blog. the guy. Grant Grant's Grant better than this us. guy. Grant is all over our. Jesus. I would like to. Point I mean, out, he's on our me. platform. Can we just he knows him? how to access our platform. Bring him in. Bring him in. Yeah. Bring him in. This has gone off the rails. Look Bring him in. Gracious. <laughs> um, all right, I'll text Grant after this. But Grant, no, what a funny. What we might steal him. What a funny gift that was. You gotta no, that was hysterical. That was very so you surprising. You guys made out like bandits on that one. You're, you're we the uh, tight hug of, uh, of Obama. I remember. We, we figured, we, we watched our numbers. Brett's more of the analytics guy. We watched our numbers, and, you know, Tiger Droppings definitely gave us a pretty large boost whenever people were just spamming Tiger Droppings <laughs> because they were like, we announced that we were getting banned from it. And then all of a sudden, like, everybody started posting about it, and we got like a 10,000 number bump, like, in a night. And all of a sudden, we're like, oh, this might be something here. But whenever we watched that video, we figured maybe people do like listening to it. I mean, if we've got these key and peel videos popping off, it was, it was exciting to see where we landed on it. That's great. I love seeing that where you don't, yeah, I I understand exactly what you mean, where you don't know if if people really like listening to this or not, but then you see a whole lot of positive out of it. No, because holy shit, that's great. Yeah. The people that are going to like leave reviews and stuff, it's like a spectrum. It's like they either hate you or they love you. So it's like, it's really hard to know like what the average person thinks and stuff. You know, it's like we get a ton of emails and DMS and stuff of people, but at the same time, I'm just like, ah, you know, it's like, I don't know to take the effort to do that. makes me think that you probably do this a lot. You listen (laughs) to a lot of stuff, you know, it's just, it's just weird. But like I told Mike, I said, it's like, dude, if five people, 
people listen, if 20,000 people listen, it's like, we're just going to have fun. We're going to, yeah. we're going to, and I think we used to plan guys, everything out. We don't do shit. No, we don't do anything. We turn it on and we just say, let's see what we can talk about. Yeah, we're and similar. <laughs> it turn, but I think you guys have, have that same model where we don't break news. And I think a lot of these podcasts try yeah. to be like part I'd of the I'd be breaking news, news on Twitter, bro. And it's just, it's <laughs> stupid. Like you are who you are, you know, like we're fans. So we're a fan podcast where we're not right. breaking news. Right. We don't, we're not no. an encyclopedia of facts. We sit here and just chat. The people who don't get my trolls on Twitter is large. Yeah. Very, we're, I mean, like a hundred percent satire is who we are. Um, what we will do is we'll do hashtag we break news, which is, um, <laughs> we, are you serious? Well, we'll we'll do. Yeah, are you serious? Uh, no, yeah, I didn't. Easy. No puns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Easy. Uh, no, what we'll do is we'll do um, get us either trouble. fake breaking news hashtag we break news or or if I get like a tweet or, or like a text from somebody because we get texts from people all the time with something like Paul Maneri is going to retire. I'll say. Hearing Paul Maneri is going to retire. Hashtag right. we break news. And I'm not like a media guy, obviously. Um, I don't want to be a media guy, but I'm, I'll am i share something with with our followers if I hear Absolutely. something. Absolutely. When you, why, when you why stay you in your – right. When you stay in your lane and you aspire to be the best in that lane, usually it works out. That's right. right. So no, I broke the Freeman news like hours before anyone else, so – Really, we dro- we broke the Jake Pete's mo- news. <laughs> we, we literally broke the Jake Pete's news. I didn't even know who Jake Pete's was, and I got texted some news about Jake Pete's, and I had to Google who he was. I had to pull up a picture of him. I broke the news. Hashtag we break news. So yeah, no, I just like to joke. Like you know, it was like seven in the morning, and I tweeted out. I was like, hey, if any hires happen. It was reported first by me. I'm just not going to oh, be buying my phone. <laughs> not going to be buying first my phone. First reported by for a few. Uh, Pot of Gold. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> credit to yeah. Me. yeah. Let's just, I'm just here to have fun, man. <laughs> right. It's like, you know. Uh, we are. No, I was, I was tempted to, to have my handle on here as Jeffrey Tubin before we got on. Just so, oh. you know, everybody would freak out a little bit. But, I mean, we're just clowns. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I saw on Twitter we were signed up to do a fist fight. Yeah, Dude, that's right. So Did you see we that? We were, it. we were supposed to fight each other. Uh, yeah, the so battle of the two podcasts. Uh, who was going to fight? I um, mean, I'll settle with like a, just a, a golf match or something. Like yeah, that. we could do that. You don't want like, that heat. No, that's true. No, I mean, actually, we have an intern. We have an man. intern that's coming back into school who is a scratch golfer. And once that happens, we'll oh, figure this out. That's like cheating. Yeah, yeah well, one of our co-hosts to fight for you. You know, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Brett's you a scratch. Go. Okay, nah, I, I'm scratchy. Let's just I'm just scratchy. say it. <laughs> I got an itch. Wait, hold on. Like, yeah, what, I'm what itchy. Are you, what are y'all's handicaps? <laughs> handicaps, both y'all. I play around a two and a half, three. Nice. I don't really yeah, play much I'm, anymore. I'm I'm more of a, a ten to fourteen range, so that's what we're sitting. Okay, yeah. I'm All like right. a tw- Grant's, Grant's a twelve. A 12. <laughs> Grant's a twelve. Oh my god. Oh okay, my yeah. God. No, we have to use. We have to. Okay, use back Devin. to the fist fight. Back to the fist fight, guys. We talk. We got. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. We'll fight you <laughs> for real. <laughs> I'll do a boxing match. I'm down. Right, right. <laughs> All right, I've never guys. boxed in my life. We appreciate it. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, we appreciate y'all from joining us. Uh, let us know when we can come on Pot of Gold. I uh, love the podcast. So uh, appreciate you guys again. And I hope we have a good season, buddy. Thanks, awesome. guys. It was Thanks, fun. guys. All right, Thanks. man. See Talk you. to y'all soon. Over and out. <laughs> See, you're just the worst. <laughs> no, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pot of Gold joining Let's us. Let's make fun of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, let's talk shit. Yeah, right. Forest. Oh, no, uh, great, great job with those guys. Love I, the love I, their podcast. I thought uh, an interesting point. I was about to make this point while they were still on, but um, something interesting about podcasting is how, like, when we were going into this, mm-hmm. I thought I was going to worry so much. Grant's uh, still watching. Grant the Grant's still uh, watching. You look at it. Oh, no, guy, no, oh, I, uh, I thought going into this that I was going to care so much about what people thought about this podcast. Mm-hmm. And I'm so shocked at how much I just don't fucking care at all what anyone thinks. Like negative reviews, positive reviews. Like yeah, I, just, I was getting hung up on it for a while. And then I was right, like, it's just like know, I, just don't, I don't care. I just don't care. Right. Like it's like. Especially I, now that we have I'm like a team doing, of us, you know what I mean? Right. It's like I obviously it makes me happy when people are enjoying the podcast, but it's right. like if people like you know, well, it just I, it, at the end of the day, it's like we're just doing this. To well, have fun. and again, we do a once a week podcast. Right. I think the majority of our interaction is like from social media. Uh, we're doing social media all the time, right. and we're engaging with people all the time. 
that's where our majority of our audience probably reaches us. Whereas we do a once a week podcast, they can listen to us or not. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, I, I, I think, yeah, I think it's just all about having fun. And if we just keep having fun, right. what do you think, William? William, you're William, on mic. William's on mic. I'm on mic. Uh oh. Yeah. What's up, William? What do you have to say? What's up, William? On mic. Um, what do I have to say? You're 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 a yeah. podcaster yourself, are you not? Uh, you know, I dabble. You dabble. So the radius podcast, right? You're one fourth. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm uh, more like a half, but. And then uh, one yeah, yeah, one sure. team media. We got to do a shout out to one team media. Yeah, sure. Um, we got eight podcasts underneath us right now. Is it eight? Yeah, isn't eight it, podcasts. I think it's we more have now, isn't it? No, I think it's right. Let's go through it. Us radius. Yeah. Since we're on the subject. Yep. Stadium drive. Yep. Crimea Heat, River five. Heated agreement. Heated six. agreement. Uh, positively positively Ole, Miss. Ole Miss. And uh, then uh, Dogcast. Dogcast. Is that it? Oh, it. damn it! That is a. Um, Shit, we're growing. Well, and, we're growing. And we have our school accounts going. So right. uh, we have currently LSU, Tennessee. It's like half the SEC. Alabama, Auburn. Um, Florida. Florida. LSU. Yeah, we said that one. Are so you, okay. we're, we're looking at a Texas A&M we just coming added, up. We just had Alabama, didn't we? Yeah, Alabama. I added that one. So uh -huh. that one's on there. So we have a lot of different uh, school accounts. We're adding a few more. That's great. Um, I know. Uh, one team media. Should we, should we go ahead and add Texas? I know you, I think we could, uh, I, I would like to add these a few more first, like old miss account. I think, I think we, we should, uh, I think we should add Texas and Oklahoma in like three to four years. Yeah. We'll to wait for them. Yeah. I think, yeah you're not but, allowed to join, but until I do you think do Texas that. and Oklahoma are going to be here next year. So like, I do too. I said, let's just go ahead and add them. I think they're going to figure them, out a way. We got to tell them year. that yeah. like you can only post about sec. Like if you start yeah. posting about big 12, like we're going to kick you off. You want to run the Texas one? Yeah. You feel free, man. Um, okay. So uh, a couple of shout outs to sponsors. Relief Pools. Um, check out Relief Pools. Uh, ben Landry is rolling at Relief Pools right now. So check him out. Uh, get on the list right now to get your pools done. Um, pools and hot tubs. He can do it all. So check out reliefpools.com. Also, courtesy Buick GMC, Brandon Lejan over at Courtesy. Check him out. Follow him on Facebook as well. Uh, <laughs> courtesy, We're sorry, Brandon. What are y'all doing? Uh, courtesy Buick GMC, uh, the largest um, automotive dealer in the Louisiana area. So uh, he can also um, uh, deliver anywhere in louisiana too so if you set it up with brandon right. he can actually you don't have to, to be you. in lafayette you don't have to be in Lafayette. although if you are in lafayette that would be great it's a great great place right bear process safety adam barry at bear process safety process safety development for plant and industry workers yeah i gotta fix this graphic give bear process safety a call bearps.com um they are uh almost fully booked for the year but uh, get them on the list right now, and they can help you out, and they can do it remotely. Bogies in Baton Rouge. Bogies, call Clayton over at Bogies, and he can give you some gear too. So tell tell him that One Team One Podcast brought you to Bogies. He would love that. Maybe be able to do a high school show at Bogies here soon. So we'll we'll have to get with uh, Clayton about that one. Also, last but not least. Uh, Bocock Brothers Cigars. Are you too drunk, Jack? Yeah. I'm drinking too. I'm pretty pretty yeah. Bocock Brothers Cigars. Um, there's no cigars in there, it's just the box. It's empty box. Um, they just gave me a shipment Should of be the box guy. Yeah. some nice more job. uh Connecticut blend cigars. So that box that you have right there, the Connecticut blend cigars, and the one that you see on the <laughs> on the screen right there. <laughs> Those are fantastic, and I tweeted this out this week. They are fantastic so good, with coffee. If you smoke one of those, yes, like an early lunch, early like a 10, 11 o'clock, maybe with a latte and have one of those cigars, mm. fantastic. I'm telling you, really. Thank me later. Thank me later. I will thank um, you later. Also, we have some Habanos uh, that we just got in. So wait, where can I go to get Bocock cigars? All right, so Cigar Den in Baton Rouge, also Churchill's, and then um, Habana Port. Okay, and uh, can I get them online? 
You can buy them at uh, BocockBrothers.com. Uh, do we have an update on okay. the golf line that you want to tell the listeners? They don't have it out yet, but they do have uh, – I know they have hats and, and polos and all that uh, ready to go. I'm I'm sure they're just waiting on like – It's literally um, like, guys, when, when they do release their golf line, that is my favorite golf shirt that I have. Oh, for sure. We're going to be like It says be cocky on the back. It's I know. It's so awesome. Be, hashtag be cocky. They, have, cock they even the have front. it on their uh, the cigar boxes for sure. So, um, yeah, be cocky. We appreciate those guys for supporting us. Um, again, um, pr- really big shout out to uh, Pot of Gold. Those guys yeah. been great uh, with us. Uh, I love so funny man. I love having like partnered podcasts like that. So, uh, sure. appreciate those guys for joining us tonight. I appreciate Sam being the producer. We got William, Jude, Jack. We appreciate everybody. Um, It has been one team, one podcast. Logan out.